Nigel Field cuts through my neighborhood. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're doing a bonus show this week. So that's exciting. It's a bonus. Mm -hmm. Enunciate, please. We don't want people to get the wrong idea. Yeah, and it's actually Wednesday. It's actually Wednesday today. <laughs> Not like yesterday so much. Yesterday was more like a Tuesday, I think, in all actuality. I think so. I know. I was going to do the show last night and his show so it's good it's good to, good to, good to uh, bring some uh, information for you guys so steve's gonna have to run out and uh go get the teenager ah she's not gonna be a teenager anymore oh it's ticking down wait where is the email from me oh okay there it is. So we have some interesting stuff tonight that we're going to talk about. We got some science, some health, some, you know, keeping kids safe, politics, pride, all of that stuff. All of it. There's just a really ridiculous amount of things there. Um, I didn't know that Steve was going to have to go to pick up Sky, so uh, I might shuffle around my order. I uh, have here. Where is the, 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 the I don't know what I think. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play a thing real quick. And then we'll ads. Check out luckyburritoart.com. Check out beautiful handmade jewelry, resin art, and fashions. All your gift giving needs can be met at luckyburritoart.com. Be sure to use Mom20 upon checkout to save 20% off your purchase order. Offer ends May 31st, 2023. Only at LuckyBurritoArt.com. So the mom 20 code that shows up on that advertisement, we got to change that right now. We have 15% with coupon code alien off of any of the resin items. So, and that's at lucky burrito art. Then. So, so there's that. There's that. That's, that's the thing. Get the business out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out what to cover first. I think maybe we'll start with the the lawsuit that's happening um, with with uh, Norfolk Southern. That's pretty crazy. Mm. I have more stuff that I was putting together for a bigger show with this, but I gotta do. A, I gotta. I gotta like put it all like more together. But I wanted to touch base on this. But this is something that just came out. I was gonna cover this on Sunday show. Um, I don't know how best to do this. I. I Put the link over here. I think that's probably a better way if I put it in this tab. Yeah. Just put it there. Okay, and then I can share it. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Ken? Alright. Yeah. Like, the way that it used to be, like, when you added 
something to the to the stream, it would like just automatically pop up, and now you have to like go and take an extra step. So it just makes it like more wonky. I don't know why. Okay. But. So no, this is from the World Socialist website, wsws.org, and this just came out on the sixth of June. And it says Norfolk Southern seeks to have lawsuits dismissed over derailment, toxic sp uh, chemical spill in East Palestine, Ohio. Um, do you know at Norfolk Southern or another class? It's like, what was it? Class one? Is that one? No, 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 the railway. Uh, class one. Do you, is that what it is? Is that a one or is that a, right. an I? I don't know. Uh, do you live in East Palestine or neighboring community? Tell us what you think about the Norfolk Southern disaster. I feel like form of the bottom of the article. All submissions will be kept anonymous. So there's an image, it's a photo, a uh, drone shot um, from February 4th, 2023, when the the train derailed and uh, they let it, you know, they, they let it on fire. Like, I, 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 my opinion on this is I think that they did it on purpose. You know, we, 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 we went in pretty good detail about what happened, uh, when this happened, and then the time covering it since. Um, but I feel like it's important to make sure that we, we don't lose, we don't lose uh, you know, sight that this is happening there and that other people are going through things. And, you know, like we have to remember that our air, our water, our food, our medicine is poison, is poison all over this entire country. And this is just one aspect of that. This is just one example. And this could be your backyard next. That's what I want people to remember is that this could always be in your backyard next, whether it's a train derailment, whether it's, uh, you know, a chemical plant, it's, it's, it could be anything. They transport things on, on, and, you know, in, in these big tanker trucks all the time. So, you know, it could be any of us that are affected by this type of situation, and we shouldn't be forgetting about anybody um, that is uh, dealing with that. <laughs> Miles, I just saw your comment about the orcas. We haven't covered the orcas yet. We will be covering them. <laughs> Um, so Norfolk Southern has filed a motion in court to dismiss the class action lawsuit that has been brought by residents of East Palestine, Ohio, and surrounding communities over the damages caused by the February 3rd train derailment and release of toxic chemicals into the air, water, and soil. Uh, the class action lawsuit uh, has consolidated more than 30 separate lawsuits brought by residents, property owners, and businesses that were impacted by the derailment. I mean, it's just crazy to me how, like, the government just washed their hands of this. Like, they just, like, stepped away. We're just like, yeah, we're just taking a hands-off approach. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. Like, they, they just, they, they don't care about these people, and it's awful. And, you know, if that was my backyard, if that was my area, I would want someone to cover it. I would want people to talk about it. I wouldn't want to be forgotten. Uh, you know, like we all know about like what happened in Flint, Michigan and other places where this happens. It, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, my heart goes out to the people. Uh, in a motion filed on Friday with the U.S. District Court of Youngstown, Ohio, Norfolk Southern made the absurd claim that they were not responsible for the derailment or <laughs> obligated to pay for any of the damage caused to residents health, homes, and for businesses. Yeah, like they gave out people $1,000 checks at the beginning and they have this clinic there and, you know, the, the clinic is now sending people bills, you know, like all this stuff is happening and I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. You know, it's not like we have universal health care or, or, you know, like a single payer in this country. It's not like we have, you know, just opportunities to have, you know, to go see a doctor and, and you know, remember that having insurance doesn't really like that's not that's not what i'm talking about and then even people don't even have that um so no folks ever made the absurd claims that they're not responsible for the derailment or obligated to pay any of the damage caused to residents health homes or businesses because the first car to derail was not owned by the railroad company and that did not construct the wheel bearings whose Failure is believed to have caused the derailment. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. 
in a in a in a motion they write the first car to derail not did not belong to Norfolk Southern, nor did Norfolk Southern construct the wheel bearings that allegedly overheated and caused the train to derail. The fact that Norfolk Southern train had passed not one but three hot bearing detectors uh, over the first 40 miles before reaching East Palestine or each detector showing that the bearings were getting hotter and hotter was ignored by the attorney. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this would be the same as a car owner arguing. Yeah, this is where I was. That's my point. Was that a car o o arguer? Yeah, a car owner arguing that the car's manufacturer and not themselves were responsible for a crash caused by faulty brakes, even though they had not gotten their brakes inspected and had ignored the car's warning light. The Norfolk Southern uh, filing makes three basic arguments for having the case dismissed. First, the railroad is seeking to get the case thrown out of court since the damages could run into the hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. Okay. As the loss, as the suit covers people and businesses leaving, living and working within 30 miles radius of the crash site, which would cover roughly half a million people. Additionally, the railroad argues that since they are regulated under federal law, they cannot be held responsible for accidents that happen on those railroads. As a sign, in a sign, the government regulations are closely written in such a way as to favor the massive railroad companies. Norfolk Southern points out that the laws uh, regulating the railroad industry explicitly exempt them from being sued in such cases. Wow, they just want blanket life. Like, you know, they're like, no, we're just we're just not liable. And we just say that we're not, and that's it. Um, so while this is the fact is a gross while this is in fact a gross exaggeration, uh, it is the case that those suing a railroad have a much higher burden to face in court. That's just insane to me. People like always think like, oh yeah, just do a lawsuit, just do a lot. Lawsuits are not like it, it. It it takes a lot. There's depositions. There there's a lot of moving parts for a lawsuit, and 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 knowing the law and like, you know, oh man, that's just crazy. I mean, if you've ever had like you know a lawsuit with like even a car accident or anything like that, you know it takes years. Like people aren't getting like immediate relief it's not like they get relief in the meantime until their lawsuit comes through and it can take a really long time uh so third they claim that the suit do does not provide enough details of the su uh, injuries suffered and the different levels of injuries faced by people who lived within a mile of the crash site and those who lived further out attorneys for the plaintiffs stated that while the company's motion will likely be rejected. The fact that it has been submitted at all is an indication that the railroad will fight vigorously to limit their financial liability. Even if they lose at trial, they will use these arguments in the appeal to get any settlement with it. That's very true. And they always come at you in like the worst way to begin with. Like they show you like how they, we you know when they file for when the corporation files for a lawsuit to be, be dismissed, you always hear like these extreme like things that just don't usually make a lot of sense to, you know, like just people that are not, you know, lawyers uh, pushing this. And it's really crazy because like you hear it and you're like, what the hell? that doesn't even make logical sense, but it's an argument that they can make. And they, all they have to do is like get somebody to back them up on that. And they get a judge that 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 wants to support that, uh, or is paid off to do that. Then you know the, the people are screwed. It's always the people that are screwed. Um, so four months since the East Palestine disaster, it has now been over four months since a February third crash of the Norfolk Southern eastbound train that set thirty eight cars off the track, including eleven cars carrying toxic materials. Yeah, there was some really weird stuff that they burned too. Um, so three days later on February 6th, Norfolk Southern carried out a controlled release and burn. Uh, this can, uh, consider, uh, this consisted of the deliberate rupturing of five of the overturned tanker cars releasing 1.1 million pounds of vital chloride into the ground and then setting it ablaze. 
This sent flames shooting 200 feet in the air, and a column of smoke rose into the atmosphere that seemed uh, that, that could be seen from miles away. Over the next several days, the plume of smoke drifted outwards, depositing toxic chemicals onto the land and into the rivers for miles around. Many of these Palestinians, nearly 5,000 residents, as well as people throughout the area, suffered severe chemical burns in their throats, eyes, nose, and lips. Many people developed rashes, dizziness, and headaches. It's worse than that, though. It's way worse than that. Like, you can't even drink your own water there. Like, there's just so much that's happening. Uh, vinyl chloride is a known carcinogen responsible for liver and brain cancer, as well as damages to other organs in the body. The byproduct of burning vinyl chloride fall into the category of chemicals known as dioxins, which are highly cancer-causing. So you can, I mean, anybody that has any basic understanding, you know what I mean? If you're exposed to something that usually causes cancer and you burn it and you put all that plume of smoke everywhere, it's it's gonna it's gonna usually cause what you know what it's known to cause. Uh, for a month for for a month, full month following the derailment and the burn of the EPA officials refused to test for dioxins in the soil and water. Hmm, remarkable. Uh, most recently, evidence has come out that the EPA officials knew that the first-hand air quality testers that have been used by the contractors hired by Norfolk Southern were not significant to capture the levels of dioxins and vinyl chlorides that would have been present. And if you saw my previous coverage of this, I, I investigated into the company itself that they sent to do those. And it's it's the same company that have covered up for all kinds of things. They've been at all these natural disasters. They've been in lawsuits. So please check out the previous coverage that I have about this if you haven't already. Uh, residents from both East Palestine and surrounding areas continue to suffer from the effects of the deliberate poisoning of their community. Many residents have turned to private testing labs to have themselves in their homes uh, and farms tested. And these tests are really expensive. They're really expensive. Uh, Linda and Russell Murphy own a little farm under three miles from the crash site, have publicly uh, released the test results for themselves and their farm. Tests from Linda show that her body contains uh, byproducts of vinyl chloride soil samples taken from their farm show the presence of dioxins at the level that could only have arisen from the burn. Uh, Jessica Hopkins, or Hopkins, son, oh my god, Hopkinson, <laughs> I cannot say your name right, I'm sorry, uh, who lives just across the Pennsylvania border from East Palestine, told the World Socialist website that her brother and his family have been forced to move out of their home because of the drill. It's awful. I mean, they're like, and, and they, they're they like, yeah, we're not responsible, though. You know, like, they're not responsible for it. It's the wheel-bearing company as well. Um, Jessica ex, uh, explained that her brother and family were driving home through the area when the derailment happened, she said they never thought they would ha have to leave their home. Now we can't go back to their home without getting sick. Oh. I mean, what would you do? Like, personally, what would you do if that happened to you? You know, like, do you have, like, uh, a backup plan if your house, like, just suddenly was not habitable anymore? I, I, I know we don't. Um... My brother has had to relocate to South Carolina and leave the only home he ever knew. He planned on living there his entire life. Our family has been broken up. We are used to family dinners every Sunday, and now I can't see three of my nieces and nephews. My, my brother's oldest is here with his mom, which is a strain on their relationship. Jessica said that her brother told her that they all... Uh, felt burning in their lungs and especially he as a as a young son and his young son were the most affected with eyes burning and blurred vision he said he didn't feel like himself like he was crawling out of his skin and like you know these people are affected it's no fault of their own like they didn't do this. They didn't freaking, they didn't sabotage the train. They didn't make the wheel bearings happen. They didn't make them release and burn these chemicals. 
they are innocent like bystanders of this no matter what their political background is whether you agree with them or not because you know like the women on the view we're talking about them oh well they're trump supporters there's not that doesn't matter it really doesn't matter we don't have to agree with people to care about them we don't have to attack them just because we don't agree with them it doesn't make them less uh you know valuable because they don't agree with you as with many residents of east palestine um when they spoke to the hospital they were made to feel as the symptoms were all in their head jessica said which is very it's a very typical like you know just deny it deny it because they don't know what to do with you or they don't want to test or they you know what i mean they whatever the reason that, <laughs> that that medical professionals like pretend that you know something isn't happening for whatever reason you know it's it's a very common thing that people like are told that symptoms are just in their head and it's not right uh the family says her brother's symptoms have gotten better since leaving the area but worries that they don't know what the long-term effects will be like we're a close family. We are uh, not used to being apart, Jessica said. It has been very hard on my mother not to be able to see her son and grandchildren. We used to all go over to mother's house for Sunday family dinner each week. Jessica is considering moving to South Carolina with her family as well. It might be better for her um, to be away from there, unfortunately. Uh, Jessica is especially angry at the fact that the railroad did not act in a timely manner to prevent the derailment. The train traveled 40 miles and they knew about the car getting hot. They had many chances to stop and check it out. There are many trains that pass through with coal cars, hazardous material, but the company just cares about making money. Everyone just cares about profits. It's a very sad world that would permit this. Um, so down here these guys are asking uh the the ws uh, ws.org is asking if anybody if we work in norfolk southern or another uh railway you know if, or in a neighboring area and so if you do you want their website you can just find you can look it up wsws.org but i will also put the link for this in the show notes below and they're asking for people to contact them if you feel, you know, comfortable with that. My heart just goes out to the people that are affected everywhere. Um, you know, like we ended up getting, uh, oh wait, what happened with my mic? Is something wrong with my mic? Oh, <laughs> I hope nothing wrong with this the whole time. Yeah, Steve's not here. Um, you know, my, my heart goes out to the people everywhere that are dealing with any kind of health issue, with any disaster. You know, uh, they just had up in Canada, they just had all those, the, the fires that happened. And why they happened, I don't know. But um, uh um, see, I'm distracted. <laughs> like, like, like the chat and talking to you guys at the same time. Um, but, you know, that's a whole other story. <laughs> but yeah, there, there's just, I don't want to, I don't want to forget about what's happening there with, with these guys. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to forget about anybody that, that's suffering, you know what I mean? And uh, so please, uh, Please uh, help out if you can. Retweet uh, information about East Palestine. Don't let people forget about them. Uh, I'm going to see what you guys are talking about over here in this chat. And see who's here. How is everybody? <laughs> well, let's see what happened. <laughs> I know it's because we got everything mixed up, Angela. All of our days got mixed up. Steve, it's your fault. <laughs> and Mouse has strong feelings about the orca issue. We will be talking about the orcas. You saw the awesome thumbnail that Steve made. Um, 
Yeah. I, I think the orcas might have caused the, the people at the White House to shake their boobs. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, Mouse. So, hi, Teresa. Hi, Mouse. Hi, Angela. We got Snork in the house. <laughs> so, Snork says, sorry, just popping in now. Boobs are a fatty uh, <laughs> leaf on the body. These, these would move in harmonic motion in the ocean water and would calm or soothe orcas and not <laughs> make them. <laughs> Oops, are great. <laughs> hey, Agro, good to see you. What, what is, what is, I know it's just. In an anesthesiologist live while watching my dog. Oh, interesting. Oh, is that the guy that I think? I think was it you that told me about him? The in the guy that does like the anesthesia shows and stuff like that. You do controlled releases. I don't know if I want to know about these controlled releases, Mouse. Uh, oh. <laughs> Snork. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are hilarious. You guys are hilarious. Oh my god. <sighs> so, let me see. What else is going on over here in the comments? Oh, a mouse, you're doing the most terrifying house painting job in the world this week. What? It, yeah, Everett, he, he said it. Come here. Okay, okay, okay. Can you guys hear him? Everett's crazy. Yeah, it is. It is absolutely tragic. Uh, what happened? What happened? I don't know how to fix my my audio. <laughs> See, Steve, I do need you here. Oh, I hate. Yeah, I don't. I don't even. Like, there is some crazy stuff about the rabies shots, about getting your dog rabies shots and stuff, too. And I know that they require them, but there's definitely some stuff that I need to, like, look into with that. Because uh, there's been vets that have come out. Oh, my gosh. Everett is sitting on my lap, and, like, his head is right here. Like, right here off camera. And uh, he's sitting with his paws on the table. And he's like sitting up like a little person. No, don't start knocking shit over. Stop it. He's an asshole. Stop. It's good to see you, Gore. How are you doing? Did you locate your phone? Did you did they find it? The post office? Oh, let's see. What else are you guys are saying over here? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some of the, the interviews with the, the people from Norfolk Southern, too, as well. Yes, it's Steve. He's the mastermind of all of this. I mean, can you imagine, like, like, you know, they, they, they decide that they're like, yeah, well, we'll just blame it on 
the you know the the, the bearings we'll blame it on our, all these other things as if they're not required to maintain their own train as if we could we you know i mean like what would happen if we did something like that you know like we carry insurance for a reason they just don't they just don't want this to you know like take it all their profits and everything else salty Ooh, mouse i would love to hear it you got you're gonna have to come on and uh show off for us you're gonna have to do it that's just all there is to it. <laughs> Hi, Vicky. Yeah, we're we should we should we're gonna have to look into uh, look into that about for the for the dog. I don't even know if we can even talk about it on YouTube. I don't even know. I don't know how that works. I know for humans, <laughs> they don't like that very much. <laughs> like, I got in trouble for covering uh, quite a few things um, in the last, <laughs> last bit of time. I got strikes and, and you know, they, dealt, they went back and got me like, it was like, I don't know, a couple months back, they went back and went to, like, one of the first shows that I did, and they, like, gave me strikes for a show that was, like, for, like, when I first started, like, a year before. So, yeah. Hey, Zainab. I see you. Yeah, and I mean, we cover, Snore came on, actually, and we talked about Norfolk Southern and what happened with the train derailment in, in quite a bit of detail. Oh, so the bridge falling in Pennsylvania was actually a railroad crash? What? I did not hear about that at all. That's crazy. I heard about the the the, the actual like you're talking about the road that fell, but I saw that. I didn't know it was from a railroad crash. If that's the same thing, if that's what you're talking about. Oh, is there, there's a humming or something? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Steve should be back soon, though. So, we'll be, we'll be able to fix this. Snork, we have that on the agenda to talk about tonight. <laughs> you, I'm dead serious. I have the the, the collider. I cannot say it right. Steve told me a bunch of times today because he's corrected me and I cannot say it right. But we have that on the agenda tonight. It was actually, it's one of the first things I was going to talk about, but I wanted to talk about that when Steve was here. So, yeah, I can't say it out loud. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> Is it? I don't know what it sounds like. Did I make it worse? Is it any better? <laughs> See, audio is is evil. Do you guys know this? Like, it's it's evil. So let's see. I'm kind of going out of order. I didn't know like that. Steve was going to go get Sky at this time, so I'm going out of order because I wanted to cover the 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 collider and all that with him here. Um. Let me see. All right. I have this. Since we're talking about health things. Oh, wait. I need to put it over here first. Let me do this. Ah, oh, right. Awesome. They're back. So we'll be able to, we'll be able to, uh, fix the audio. Do you want to fix that before I get to the next story? Yes. 
that's driving me fucking crazy. I don't know what it sounds like. It's, it sounds like it, the mic is across the room picking you up over there. Turn that up a little. Turn that up a little. Turn that up a little. This it sounds better. How about now, everybody? Is that like uh, the dulcet tones you're used to? Sounds they said I better. fixed it. They said I fixed it. Oh, you it. fixed Come on. I, I fixed it before you even did. Get out of here. Yes. <laughs> well, I just, I refixed it. No. I refined your fixing. They said I fixed it. Well, I fixed it. <laughs> I just wiggled the thing. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what it was. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It was picking you up on this mic. Oh, that's like well, that sucks. I'm sorry. That must have been uh, a now pain. Now it's going to be too loud. Everybody's going to be like, ah, oh, John, put her fucking mic away from her mouth. <laughs> Jesus. So, you know what's crazy? Snork just said no one's covering the, 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 the collider. No one is covering the collider. And that's what we have. Like, I, that's that was supposed to be part of, like, our Sunday show. Yeah. So I don't know if I should go back, uh, back, or if we should start from here because we're talking about this part of it. We'll just start here. We'll come. We'll come to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, let me add this to the stream so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So Alina suspends policy that denied care to patients with large debts. So this is uh this is from June 9th, 2023, and this is in the Star Tribune. And says the health system to increase awareness of financial options that could prevent patients with uh, unpaid bills from losing access to clinics. And Alina Health is paused a policy denying clinic appointments to patients with substan uh, substantial unpaid bills. The controversial policy did not affect access to hospital or emergency care. And usually that is the case. You know, usually you can still go to a hospital and, and get care that way. But they'll deny you, like, you know, just the everyday care. So, like, you know, people end up using the emergency room as a regular doctor. And that's not that's not what it's designed for. And, it you know, it clogs up emergency rooms. And it makes it worse. It's like... at 80%. Yeah, they, they gotta be they gotta run at eighty percent. That's what they that is their normal capacity is to be very full. They a hospital doesn't ever want to not be running at a full full speed. Um, can you get the cat? Yeah. Uh, um, he's trying to. Cat. Get down. He is really testing things today. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I think it's Alina. A-L-L-I-N-A. -L -L -I -I Health is pausing its practice of denying non-emergency clinical care on patients with substantial unpaid medical bills. It's like, huh, you know, you, you would think. She's... Uh, the Minneapolis-based health center provider announced the decision Friday, along with plans to talk with community leaders and its own doctors about ways to help patients who are struggling to pay their bills. Well, geez, that would be a much better approach. If it's actually about treating people and about medicine, then you would think that they would want to do that to begin with and not be like, yeah, you can't, you can't come here. So, you know, so we're committed to listening to our community and working to better understand the barriers to accessing the financial support available to our patients, said the statement from Alina's chief executive, Lisa Shannon. That's like two first names. Lisa Shannon. Yeah, it's like two first names. I used to know identical twins that had the last name Shannon. Oh, maybe it's one of them. Roberta. That's not. That's not. No, it's Lisa. Not Roberta. It's Lisa. Nope. Okay. Roberta and something else. Okay, so wow. we don't need to dox anybody that you knew. Okay. Nope. <laughs> we are committed to listening to our community and working to better understand the uh, barriers to uh, accessing the financial support available to our patients said a statement from Alina's chief executive, Lisa Shannon. The announcement came one week after the New York Times study publicized the policy and the Minnesota Attorney General, Keith Elson, Elson, is that how you say it? 
E L L I S O N. Potatoes. Uh, invited any patients affected by it to uh, contact his office for investigation. Patients under the Alina policy weren't able to make appointments with their clinical providers if they had three or more instances of $1,500 in unpaid debts. Alina officials stressed that the pause policy only affected clinical care, not hospital care. Yeah, because that's fine, right? <clears throat> it's like, how much money did they make? How much money? If you're making profits off of people, then you your profit shouldn't exist. Like it's the same. It's the same concept. It's the same concept as like any of anything else. Like you shouldn't be making profit off of sick people. But here we are. But it's a for profit industry. Why it is a for profit they... industry. It's and it's awful. Gosh, why can't they make money too? No, they shouldn't. Uh, before the policy took effect, patients would have received 20 billing statements or phone calls that mentioned payment options and financial assistance. However, what? the pause was okay. I'm in, I'm trying to do something. Was partly quite possible if there's none there. Was partly a recognition that Alina hadn't given its clinicians enough information to pass along to patients and help them avoid any denial of care. They estimated that the restriction affected about 2,000 out of 1.9 million clinic patients per year. So, so 2,000 is still a lot of people that are affected. And if they can't pay that, then they shouldn't be, like, cut off. That's ridiculous. The policy previously had been suspended at the start of the pandemic, but restarted in 2021. Attorney Margaret Henchman said that she had uh, helped patients with medical debts re regain access to care at Alina and also and with as well as the Mayo Clinic in Rochester and other providers across Minnesota. Cutting off patients has become more common in recent years following the COVID-19 pandemic that increased financial pressure on hospitals. Ugh, they, oh my God, I can't, I cannot even comment things that I, you can just imagine how I feel about this. Um, Filing for bankruptcy is usually the quickest protection because it suspends collection efforts and restores access to care. So then they have to file for bankruptcy? Like, yeah, like, let's put this on people that are sick, that need care. Let's let's make them do this extra step and, and file for bankruptcy. <sighs> Southern Minnesota patients face a particular challenge if they lose access to Mayo, to the Mayo. Oh, my gosh. Mayo has got such a hold of all those towns in southern Minnesota, she said. When you get cut off from Mayo, you're really cut off from health care. Like, that could be devastating to people. Absolutely devastating to people. Mayo has identified by Kaiser Health News Investigation in 2022 as one of the 90 U.S. medical providers that denied care to patients with unpaid bills. Amory Hospital and Clinic in Western Wisconsin also was identified in the investigation of 500 hospital and clinic systems. The investigation included Alina, uh, Alina's Fairbound Medical Center, but could not determine the extent of its policies. The practice was troubling to U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary. So this is just, like, this is devastating to people. I can't imagine, like, you know, suddenly, like, oh, yeah, you owe too much. You're too sick to pay. You don't have the money to pay. So now you're just, you're just screwed. You know, that's it. Um... If you go into the medical profession and you're going to follow the the follow this, like you know, it says it says don't it says do no harm. You know, the worst thing you can do is be a medical provider and not give people access to care that you were trained to provide. Um, can you get the cat, please? I, I just put him down. I know it doesn't that doesn't mean he didn't jump back up another second later. The reasons people don't pay their medical bills can vary. Some have no insurance or no eligible or public programs, uh, but don't know it. Others have high, high deductible uh, plans that leave them with cost-sharing levels they can't afford. 
Federal law guarantees access to emer emergency medical care. Minnesotians over the past decade have had to have had the added protection of an agreement between the attorney general and the hospital providers that prevents abusive debt collective practices. It's like, do they think that people like want to be, you know, they want to be sick. They want to like rack up medical bills. It's not like they're going, it's, it's not like the same thing as like, you know, uh, financing a, f a fancy car or something. This is your actual life. This is your health. And, you know, we're only as healthy as the sickest people in our society. And if people are sick in our society, then we're failing. We need to, we need to do better. We need to do better. All of us need to do better. And, you know, we need to protect the people that are sick, that are vulnerable, that, that, that don't, that can't do it for themselves. So the agreement includes clinic and outpatient services and list providers on their debt collection and wage garnishment tactics. It also ensures discounted rates for uninsured patients. It does not specify, specifically address whether providers can suspend access to patients with unpaid debts, um, but could apply if the denial is considered a coercive collection practice. And and what are they going to do? What what are people going to do that don't have money to pay their medical bills if they do if they are abused by this system? You know, like if they do use these, you know, coercive correction practices and they're, you know, they come at them, what are they going to do? You know, like they're 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 already sick or they already need care. They're not getting what they need. But then you're going to add on to that and then, you know, what are they going to do? You're, 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 you're targeting the weak and the vulnerable. You're targeting the people that, that need the most help in society instead of helping them be better and well. You know, when people are well, that's when they can work. When people are well, that's when they don't, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we need, like, we need wellness care. We need, we need wellness care that, that is for, you know, the body, the mind, and the spirit. Not, not this. We don't need collection agencies coming after people. So, I'm hoping that they, they come, they, they come around and that, you know, they, that we get some solutions to this, but this is why we support, uh, you know, everybody getting health care. And everybody given, being given that same gold standard of care. Um, so they said they use scheduling hold as a last result, a result and only in non-urgent circumstances. But like, okay, so what happens if you don't get in for regular care and then you have to go in for emergency care? It costs a lot more to go to an emergency room than just going to a regular, going for regular care. Like we're doing everything so backwards. It should be that the emergency room is last resort for people. That should always be the last result. Resort, not result, resort for anybody. Um, so let's see. We also help patients create reasonable and extended payment plans with no interest as needed as often as we often provide provincial assistance if a patient is unable to pay their bill. So I'm glad that they reverse this for people. Like that must give them some relief, but you know, it's 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 not it's not a solution. Like, oh, whoops, uh, we got some public outcry and, you know, like, so. I'm going to go over here in the chat and see what you guys think of this. I don't know how far back I should go. <gasps> yep, X is saying that you fixed it, Steve. No, I fixed it. Ah, uh, no, they the said. comes out. They said I fix it. You are Team Steve. Whatever. Yep. Whatever. The cat's up there again. Cat. What the fuck, man? Yeah, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the cat. Stop. <laughs> Jumping on things. 
No, he just wants to sit up on this thing. He wants the table. He wants, table. He wants a little table. <laughs> Vicky said, stop lying, Yepex. Team Truth. Yeah, Yepex. I thought we were about truth. <laughs> no, Everett is not Everett's not going anywhere. He might be a pain in the ass, but he's my baby. Yeah, see? He just wanted his table. He like oh, we have a little tray table that we use, like and he likes to lay on it. He likes to get up here and knock things off. Yeah, he did that earlier. He was starting to do that earlier. He was sitting on my lap and he was sitting with his butt here and he had his paws on the table and then he just like goes over to start pulling stuff down. I'm like, I don't think so. Stop. He wants you to brush him. I think that's what he's trying to get. His brush. He's he's very Oh. He's got a bug. Got him. Oh, a moth snuck in. A little like one of those little tiny little moths snuck in. Probably when I went out earlier there was planes going over as like really really uh loud, like shaking the house. I'm like, "What is happening?" So I went outside to look. I probably brought a moth back in. Oh yeah, it's it's a mess though what they're doing to people. People need to have be able to be able to have have care. Oh, I just. Mm. We ate some freaking dandelions in our freaking salad the other day. <laughs> they were not. They were. They were bitter. They were not sweet like dandelions at all. Yeah, we have to get like yeah. Those ones were too far, too big. They were old. Not really old, but like you know. Um. They just refuse, as Zainab said, they refuse to see us uh, anything beyond the ER in Kentucky. That's insane. Yep, aggravated. That's basically it. They're like, pay up or die, bitches. Like, that's it. Pay up uh, and die. So we can make more room to get some more people in there. That's what they do. Uh, oh wow uh mayo operates all the way down into iowa and wisconsin yeah ever is such a cute cat and he's got such a big personality our neighbors tricked him tricked us Oh, when I haven't seen you in forever. I said, sorry, you folks need to get a universal health care program. It's not it's not communism to have a health, ha healthy, happy society. Unfortunately, it will tax raising. It will tax raising taxes. Yeah, I'd rather pay more in taxes if I had to. Um, but I don't I don't know. If uh, if people realize how much like less it would actually it would how much it would balance out for a lot of people, like a lot of people are paying a lot more than what we would pay for in taxes for healthcare. Yeah, exactly. And if your healthcare is tied to your job and you get sick, you can't work, you lose your healthcare. Uh, yeah, it's awful. It's awful. Yep. They have they have an agenda, Oz. They have an absolute agenda. We were talking about it earlier, uh, Steve and I were how like everything is uh, connected and uh, everything that we're we're kind of like covering is all connected with this same agenda. But I can't really like mm, get into much more detail than that on here because uh, you know they have an agenda to restrict our speech.
Oh, man. Angela said, a woman I know that works at uh, Walgreens is struggling along and, along and oxygen, still working enough hours to keep her insurance. It's diabolically cruel. It is. It's so awful. Like, you know. That's, that's totally apt name, Lady Alex. She's like, I call it death care. That's, that's what the fuck it is. Yeah. What we need, what we need though, is actual, like, you know, health we need we need to have a focus on health people need to like you know know that you know their food isn't poison their water's not poison their you know, the air is not poison the medicine's not poison like people need to have like imagine how what how different things would be if those things all weren't poisoned you know what i mean because we we did an in-depth uh conversation with snork uh before who's in the chat uh about uh, you know, the water across the whole entire United States and how it's not just in these certain places that it's toxic. Like most of our water is absolutely, you know, it, it, there, there's, there's nasty water everywhere. Just because it comes out of your sink clear doesn't mean that it's fine. And that's a, often a misconception that people have is that they think, oh, well, my water is clear, so, you know what I mean, it's not, it doesn't have any chemicals in there, or or they think that, that lead shows up as, as brown, but that's not what that is. When they show the water in Flint, Michigan, this is something that Snork taught us, that the water, how it looks brown and all that, that is not from the lead. Don't assume that there's no lead in water just because it doesn't have that brown hue. That you see often, like, you know, you see people turn on the faucets and you're like, wow, wow, that water's brown and, and, and they have lead in that. There may well be lead in there also, but that's not what that's from. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, uh, I, I, th I think that, uh, Mouse is like really excited for us to talk about these orcas. Talk about the orcas? Yes. Do you have a whale fetish? I don't know if it's a whale fetish. Uh, yeah, an aggravated progressive. I don't see the orcas in the hospital. And they're taking down these boats. You know, they're doing it. Uh, Zena pointed out the emergency rooms is a new primary care physicians. Yeah, and then they're... And then they rake in all kinds of money because it's like way expensive. You don't get like the proper care there because no, it's like that's going to the convenience store of hospital. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like going to the convenience store and expecting to find a meal. You might get something that's gonna fill your belly, you know, like being travelers and stuff like that. We've made a lot of meals out of like, you know, uh, okay, this is the only store we can, you know, like we can try to find something to eat, but it's not the same thing as actually going to get a healthy meal. You know what I mean? Like that's what, how I kind of see it. Like emergency room care is supposed to be, just be a temporary care to get those emergencies treated and managed. And it shouldn't be just that, you know, like that's the only way. Wow. Ghost Star said, I haven't gone to the doctor in over a decade. Yeah, that's crazy. It's been about that long for me. All right, let me see. I'm going to try to scroll down here and try to get through these chats and so that we can uh, go on. Uh, Owen said, do you know there's a law in Canada preventing profiteers from loaning money to people who cannot pay it back? Really? That's interesting. Like I mean, we have our we have our credit scores here. They can determine whether they think we're at a risk or not for paying something back. Uh, do you guys have the same credit they'll scores still, there? They'll still give you a loan whether you can pay for it or not. Yeah, sometimes they will. It will. It depends. Um, hey, Alex. Good to see you. Yes, I, I, yeah, and you work in this field, so, you know, you know exactly how it is. Yeah, they just, they just, you know, Zainab, they just lost 16 trillion, <laughs> you know, it's no biggie. Yeah, just, the way, well, we, we, we set it down, it was here five minutes ago, and then, you know, Bob went back to look for it, and it was just, it was gone, it was, I don't, 
I don't know. Somebody must have took it, I guess. Um, it's like $16 billion is like, you know, you could build like eight Walmarts out of that much cash. You know, like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> How does that just vanish? It's literally, physically, it's like a huge pile of money. And this right here is a really good point, too, because we talked about this on that episode. We'll have to link that episode down in the show notes when we do the notes after. Uh, the lead isn't the worst thing in the water. It's the easiest to fundraise for, for former TYT reporters. So please, 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 please check out that episode if you haven't. Um, it's really important because it's, it's not the worst thing in the water. We checked our water and then the links for that, for in that show that we're, that I'm talking about that we did with Snork, it's, uh, it's about the water Truly, everywhere. I'm sorry. Did I say billion? My mistake. I was I was thinking rationally. What the hell was I thinking? How do you rationally lose We're even a about billion? The Pentagon here. So thirteen or whatever trillion dollars. How how big of a physical pile is that? Let's ask the AI. You know how big of a structure could I build out of thirteen trillion dollar bills? So we'll put oh. the we'll put the link that in there and down there. Okay, so uh, Snork is bringing us an interesting fact about orcas. Uh, they many of them say hi by 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 pissing on each other. Oh. Well, I mean, I guess that they're swimming in already. Um, it's like it's like a hug, right? It's nice and warm. <laughs> it's warm until it gets cold. Hey, Bob, good to see you. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Jarrah. It's good to see you, honey. Hey, okay, that, that urinary tract is working out for you pretty good, now. Oh. <laughs> you might want to get that checked out. I think it's, it's... you run a little hot there. Stu. <laughs> <laughs> they're just named Stu. There's a whale named Stu. I think that their probably names are, are just a sound that we cannot pronounce. They're probably sounds we cannot pronounce or even comprehend, actually, because the whales are probably way fucking higher <laughs> intellectual level than we are. Yeah, they're probably smarter than us. And they're like, yeah, these people are stupid. They're like, we don't even have to talk to each other. We just like telepathically they talk to each other. They do fucking Nietzsche and William Reich, you know, they just. <laughs> they're like, yeah, you want you want to go after that boat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got dibs on that one? Like, check out my kid. He took that propeller off himself. Yeah. Stu's a proud dad. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I got to I gotta jump back into... Uh... Yeah, exactly, Jara. Exactly. We can afford health care for everyone. Dental vision, the works. And then, yeah, that, that's one thing about health care that always, like, drives me crazy is that they try to, like, say that your, your, your dental and your vision is, like, somehow separate. Like... My eyeballs are, are you know, they're, they're in there. They're in the sockets. <laughs> That's part of me. My teeth, <laughs> they're part of me. I, you know what I mean? Like, like you, 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 that's part of your skeleton. <laughs> like, what? It's not like, you know, it's, it's an accessory. It's not like, you know, it's not like, yeah, you, you, you fucking, come on now. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. It's, it's the most asinine thing. Hey, I just saw Popeye. I saw Popeye. Popeye. I see a yipper. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Yeah, I, um, you know, as far as R. Kelly told me, whales, you know, it's a very pleasant thing. He was talk talking about whales, I thought. Teresa. I want to see some of these orca relation, retaliation re relations. What? Retaliations. Learn how to read, Steve. Nobody actually uses their eyes or teeth anyway, so they're kind of irrelevant. Yes. Um, when when they got us all hooked up to the to the giant slurry machine, and <laughs> you know it'll be fine. You won't, won't miss those teeth one bit. Oh my god! It will be chewed for you. Ew. You know, by the rich people, and then just uh, no, they don't want to do that for us. They don't do anything oh, for they, us. They would though, if it was steak, they'd be like, "See how good we are to them. We chew their food for them," because they only have like seven teeth a piece anyway. So, all right, so we're at a point where we can go either to the Collider, Saturn, or Orcas. Which what? Where where are we gonna start? Where, what? Orcas, obviously. Okay, we'll get we'll go through the orcas. It can't be a fucking whale tease, man. Ah, uh, but but I think the the hydrogen. I are we sure that the CERN didn't make the orcas do something? I don't know. 
It could have had something to do with the titties at the White House. It could have been. It could be. All right. We'll go to the orcas then. It's like total, we're totally out of order, like how I put this in here. So it's all right. We'll just uh, jump Nobody around. knows the order except for you. So I know. I'm the one who knows the order. Yeah. So it's, it really, nobody else is affected by that. <laughs> He's like, it doesn't matter because I'm the only one who knows the order. Yeah. I just want to make sure I don't, I don't miss anything of the show. Well, you're doing the show, so I don't think you're going to miss the show. No, not miss the show. I don't want to miss any articles or anything that we're covering. <laughs> He's messing with me, guys. I was. I'm making potatoes in case anybody's interesting with all the banging around and old guys scuffling around sounds are. So there's actually video... Of the orcas going after the boat and taking off the rudders. That is a that is a valid concern, Snork. He said the largest likely issue is all the Viagra going into the ocean. Because you know, there's nothing like a horny whale sees a hot boat, you know, uh Wait, where the, all, I don't know. It's why possible. is no, I'm not saying that to you. I'm saying that right. to this because I'm like, where is the freaking where's the work of freaking video? That's Trump's impeachment, but it's showing the orcas. Okay, I don't know what the heck is going on here. I have another video clip of it though. Much love there, Agro. Peace out. So this is from Newsweek, and this just came out on the 9th, uh June 9th, 2023. And a captain whose ship was attacked by orcas at the south coast of Spain dun, dun, has shared dun. shocking footage of the incident on social media. Pony orca boners. They'll put your eye out with that thing, young man. Can you make it bigger and I'll read it? I don't know. Well, potentially we could read it for the, for the reading impaired. Mm -mm, and reading alone. Reading singles, reading in pairs. Uh, is that your dorsal fin, or are you just happy to see me? Try to make it bigger. It's just not working. Okay, now it looks too big. Well, it says uh, some words. Oh, yeah. Hang on, I no, moved that's, it. That's probably not bad, the size that you have it. Wait, is this a video here? No, that's a freaking screenshot. It's what? just a screenshot of a video. It's trying I to fool you. I know. I'm trying to get this to respond to me, but it's not. Lady Alex said it's the fish planet of the apes. It is. I think <laughs> so. I don't uh, know why this is being weird. Okay. Snorky thought he, I said uh, to make the orca boner bigger, but no, that's not That's not accurate. Why is it doing this? Okay. I'm gonna, I don't know how to make this fix this. Steve. I, I don't know sure. what it's doing. I don't know why it Okay, so where's the where's the thing start from? The article. It's just lagging, that's all. That's the size of the picture. I'm no idea. I don't know what you're Okay, never mind. I'll, okay, just stop and I'll I'll I'm gonna unclick it. Unclick it then. That's what I would do. Be like me. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to put it back on. <laughs> take it off and put it back on again. That's what she said. This is fucking... Uh... You know, sometimes you do a show on a Wednesday and it's it's just weird. Okay, it came you know? up the same way that it did. I don't know what is happening with this freaking thing right now. Uh... Good night, Teresa. Have a good one. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Bye, Teresa. Have a good night, honey. All right. Let me put that there. Again. Hey, Josh Davis. You're just in time for the orcas. There's orcas involved. Mm -mm -mm. It isn't even Thursday until, well, it is for Oz, but not for us. We have to wait. No, tomorrow is when. We are having Buck Angel come on Buck tomorrow night. Angel. I'd like to do a little, like, he should have, like, a sound bite that he just plays. Buck Angel. You know, some, like, 
uh, some. Uh, you can make him one. I'm sure sweet, he would love it. Some sweet harmonies and whatnot, what have you. All right, I'm gonna. Why is it doing that? Ugh. Oh, you're getting you're getting a, a call in. Is that what's happening? Yes, I was gonna. Call. I got a call like suddenly, <laughs> but um. I, I don't know why the video keeps going beyond to this other thing. Like it's like it's because it, it's new it's news week and it sucks. Yeah, but like, where's the or video that was there for the orcas? You have to uh, go back, follow the link again. I just did, and there it is. I see it now. The light is on in the van. Oh, damn it! I see it. Our neighbors, we look out for each other, and that was the neighbor looking out and uh, calling Steve out for leaving light on in the van. I don't know why it's doing this weird thing where it won't play. Where's the orca clip? <sighs> Whatever. Like, why do I want to look at these people when I'm like, you know, I'm talking about orcas. They don't have anything to do with it. So, a captain whose ship was attacked by orcas off the uh, south coast of Spain uh, has shared shocking footage of the incident on social media. And here's the vi here's the actual orcas, but I have an actual big video of the, the same actual? of the of the actual yeah Steve stop it actual. of the footage that's supposed to be on this. So th there, there's something happening. These, these guys, these orcas are, are just not happy with people. I don't know why. Why bad stuff happened? Obviously, at some point. Yeah, people know, were there abusive. Was, there, was, there was boats and there was propellers and there was hurt orcas and orcas are like, "Fuck you, bitch! We're done with that shit." And now they just like, "I'll bite them off," and I'll teach my kids how to do it. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the other image because that one was just not working properly. All right, here we go. Yeah, I've seen video of that pod of uh, orcas around Monterey Bay. Oh, what? In um, California, there's, there's like somebody made a documentary about them that was really fucking cool. I watched a few years ago. They're super smart, dude. I think they're probably, you know, that's the thing everybody overlooks on this on this planet for the most part is the fact that everything that lives on this planet it uh, inherently possesses some sentience. Like every single thing that exists on the planet that is alive, you know, and, and possibly, quite possibly, even things that we think are fucking inanimate. So it's just our own friggin' egos and our limiting that possibility. I think those orcas are probably smart as fuck. And even if they're not, they're fucking like really well designed fucking creature. <laughs> you know, they can fuck some shit up. Oh, whoops. I don't want to make it that big yet. I got to. Add it to the stream first, and then I can do that. Yep. John Kemper. John, you're just in time for the orcas. Orcas, man. They're like Stork friggin thinks they're they're just horny whales, but I don't know. I no, I, I I think it's more than that. It's potentially a combination of those things, though. Certainly, because there's a lot of medications that, and a lot of. Well, you know, I mean, he doesn't, I don't think he means that they're things. just like horny whales, but I think that yeah. he's saying, you're saying that in a very simplified thing. He I said, was, was he joking. thinks it's the medicine. I know, but someone, anyone else who just tuned in doesn't know that. My joke. Listen, the medications and things that, because we are poisoning the water. What What is, what effect is that having on these guys? And why do we deserve to do that? Yeah, fully. Even the water's alive, go start. Arrancó el segundo. 
We lost both rudders. Arrancó el, do, el segundo. We lost both rudders. That's got to be so scary to go through. And then, like, they're just, like, right there. I mean, what are they going to start doing? Are they going to start killing whales again? What are they going to do to solve this? We've coexisted with whales for how long? That's pretty amazing to think. We haven't coexisted. They still hunt them. They still fucking... Still they still hunt them and they still go after them, but they haven't done this. And, like, what are they going to start? Are they going to start whale hunting? Are they going to be like, oh, we have to get rid of these, and then, then, then what? Even if they did that, even if they did a select few or whatever, it, it, I don't think that's a solution. But what are they going to do? I mean, like, if you think about it, if you think like to like what happens and like you know in Hollywood and stuff like that, there's a lot of movies that predict like events, right? And how do we know that, you know, that the animals haven't turned on the humans before? And how do we know that they won't again? <laughs> you know, because it's... Fido don't look so friendly now, does he? I know, right? Like, are the, all the animals just going to, like, turn on the people? Can you imagine if that starts happening? We won't be the predators anymore. We won't be the top. <laughs> the apex will have been taken. Mm-hmm. If they, if they, you know, it'd be like the, what is it? The planet of the apes and all of that. Like we could, we could really, you know, the animals could, could turn on us. Yeah. And they have complete, yeah, they have families. They, they are, the orcas are amazing and they're, they're captured and they're put into these small enclosures for humans to uh, go and watch at SeaWorld. It's really wrong. It is really wrong is for us to do. See them up close? It I mean, yeah. And I went I I honestly I went to SeaWorld. I did go uh there once. It wasn't like my choice. Someone else I was on vacation with them, like, you know, but um so I went. Uh but like after I learned more about it, I was like, I would, I wouldn't go back there at all. Like and this was, you know, many, many years ago. But you know, oh my god, Snork knows about these orcas. He says, yes, don't call them horny whales. Their penises are only two meters long, and they can pick up people or turtles with them. Only two meters, huh? Is that six feet? Do you? kids at home <laughs> that is a long winky <laughs> super long winky that's Bro, crazy they can they can pick up a turtle <laughs> or people so like a really well endowed one would have a, a johnson like the size of shack or something you know? like, that's oh. crazy that's long that's taller than i am like that's bigger that you know what i mean like six feet taller than me yeah. taller than steve by mere centimeters. I mean, do you think they know what the rudder, what the rudders do? Maybe they don't understand the complexity of what the rudder, but they know that, that they know what moves. They know what makes noise in the water. And, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oz, there is a moral of the story. Don't poke bears. Don't piss off orcas and dragons. Forget, forget about it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they said get out of my ocean. Like they're it's like been a long time you go now. I don't know why they have like a <laughs> Yipper that. said I thought that the 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 horny whales were sperm whales and I I think yeah. You've been misinformed, son. Misinformed is what Steve said. Just pro that's whale propaganda. Man. Yeah, no, this isn't the first time this has happened, but it's just I, I think I think that they're freaking they're 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 getting organized. Like, how come the whales can be more organized than the humans? Come on, I don't I don't think we're 
I don't think that we're, uh, you know, that we're some, uh, <laughs> I don't think we're necessarily smarter than all these animals and these creatures. They're just smarter in a different ways. Are the orcas non-binary? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I don't. I think they're just, they're, they do what they do. And things are much simpler for an orca. I, I wouldn't call a six foot Johnson non binary. Yeah, a six foot Johnson is probably not nine binary. Yeah. Just saying. It seems unlikely. Yep. And we are animals too. That's exactly, that is exactly true. And that's why I said what I said about sentience. Yeah. Yeah, we need we need to we need to be bringing back respect and balance, and balance and harmony with nature, and thinking about others and caring about others, and you know, <laughs> yeah, I was wondering that too. Like, how do you know they can pick up people snork? <laughs> Are there whales picking up people with their winkies? <laughs> I read it. Yeah, right? Maybe maybe it was an orca that, that was hired by Biden to wipe out Nord Stream. You know. Could have been. They could have been. They, I mean, remember there was like those stories where they were like, Russia trained beluga whales and stuff. Mercenary whales. Yeah, we have whale mercenaries. <laughs> they will fuck up your rudder. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe th maybe there was, uh, you know, whales that were taught how to do stuff like that, and that they just continued to to do it, and they uh -huh. taught others. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, it, they could have been taught to do that to attack. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know this particular pod. Uh, you know what I mean? They they all they all have different. I'm not done with that pod. I don't know. I don't know what they're saying. Down with POD. Yeah, you know me. Oh. So, so uh, Snork said that they can tell what the rudder does with the sonar, and they can tell that the rudders cause. Uh, uh, yeah. That makes sense. Yipper said you're misinformed, Steve. <laughs> That's a rumor. Yeah, we are, John, we are definitely, you know, we have big brains. And also what comes with that, that we have is uh, big egos. And, you know, people, people just think that they know, they know better. And uh, everyone thinks that they know better for the next person. And so on. And so forth. You and then. my battleship. Yeah, I sank my friggin' battleship for sure. Oh, that's okay. what I was thinking. I mean, like they could have, you know, they, they could have taught orcas to do something like that. You know, I like Lady Alex's uh, take. She said the orcas will use their their long rods to uh, to fight against injustice. To uh, Popeye! You know, to uh, uh, they will use their penises as swords, blows against the empire. I don't know. It kind of made me feel funny saying that. Salty, say, salty, salty, salty said they must have uh, orca marines. They have navy seals. <laughs> of course, that makes perfect sense. Salty, good point. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Salty, you know what? Steve trips me out. Like, every day, uh, Salty does a stream where he has, like, ASMR, and it's, like, ducks by his pond. There's all these birds and stuff. And, like, you know, we'll come downstairs, and, like, uh, like usually I know in the morning, like, if Steve has the computer open, and if I hear those noises, like, it's usually from the computer. But this morning, he completely tricked me. He had it playing on his tablet. And I'm like, the computer's not... I'm like, I'm like... What's going on outside with the birds? <laughs> I'm like, those are California birds, dude. It doesn't even sound like that around here. I'm like, he's like, you don't know the difference between <laughs> California birds and, you know, on, Connecticut bro. birds. I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? 
<laughs> them's West Coast birds, left coast birds, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Ridiculous. Salty spawn kicks ass. I recommend it. Just, you know, get your coffee, sit down, and just put on your headphones and listen to the traffic off in the distance as cars occasionally go by. <laughs> And there's ducks and there's it will make you feel like you're really uh Fantastic. a pond. Mm -hmm. It trips me out. Salty has the best virtual pond in California. How do I make this go down here now? How do I get back up to that? Okay. Oh, if I click it over here. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to go to this right here. What Snork was saying, no one's covering. <laughs> we were going to cover this on Sunday, but I had to push it back. So I'm glad that you're here, Snork. So you can... Marmots are breaking through the fucking fabric of reality, bro. Is it Hadron? Hadron? Hadron. I said it right. Hadron Collider. Yes. <laughs> I was telling everybody earlier that I was like, I kept saying it wrong all day. I was trying to say it. <laughs> so this is the Hadron Collider. Blog science natures. So it feels like there's like some crazy stuff happening. Yeah, right. It's a little weird. You know, the, the researchers at the Hadron Collider are confident to make contact with parallel universe in days. They're just like, hey, I saw a parallel universe over there. We're gonna we're gonna see what's up with them. And they just figured they'd let us know. The astoundingly complex LHC Atom Smasher at the CERN Center in Geneva, Switzerland, will be fired up to its maximum energy levels. Ever an attempt to spot or even generate tiny black holes. Sounds perfectly fine. What could go wrong? If successful, a totally new universe will be exposed. Because, you know, universes love to be exposed. Modifying completely not only the physics books, but the philosophy books as well. It is even probable that gravity from our own universe may transfer into this parallel universe, crushing it to a two-dimensional shape. Now, researchers at the <laughs> LHC say the experiment is assured to intensify alarmist critics at the LLC of the LLC. LHC? LHC say the right <laughs> word. Many of the whom uh, at first warned the high-energy particle collider would start at the end of our universe with making a black hole of its own. But so far, Geneva stays intact and securely outside the event horizon. Yeah, so far, so good. No doubt the LHC has been astoundingly, outstandingly, damn, it's hard to read the little letters, successful. First researchers proved the existence of the mysterious Higgs boson god particle, a key building block of the cosmos, and is seemingly well on the way to revealing dark matter a previously untraceable theoretical prospect that is now believed to make up most of the matter in the universe. But next week's experimentation is reflected to be a game changer. Mir Fazal, uh, one of the three strong group of uh, physicists behind this experiment, say uh, just said that just as many parallels of sh sheets of paper, which are two-dimensional objects, breadth and length, can exist in a third dimension. Like, right. whoo, like parallel <laughs> universes can also exist in higher dimensions. So he's saying those three, you know, you can have as many sh parallel sheets of paper in those three, and then you can go higher. And it's it's much like the sly in the family stone song. We predict that gravity can leak into extra dimensions, and if it does, uh then miniature black holes can be produced at the LHC. Uh, normally, when people think of the multiverse, they think of the many world worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, where every possibility is actualized. This cannot be tested, and so it is philosophy and not science. 
This is not what we mean by parallel universes. What we mean is real universes in extra dimensions. Oh, move the goalpost a little, DB guys. As gravity can flow <laughs> out of our universe into the extra dimension, such a model can be tested by the detection of many black holes at the LHC. We have calculated the energy at which we expect to detect these mini black holes in gravity's rainbow. Gravity's rainbow. Just in time for Pride Month, everybody. A new scientific theory. <coughs> Hi, Norman. If we do detect mini black holes at this energy, then we will know that both gravity's rainbow and extra dimensions are correct. Gosh, I hope so. Just because so we could know, you know, the... What's at the end of the rainbow? Couldn't be like a pissed off leprechaun, little tiny Irish guy all mad. When the LHC is fired up and the energy is calculated in tera electron volts, a TeV is a bazillion or one trillion electron volts. Up to now, the LHC has hunted for many black holes at energy levels below 5.3 TeV. But the most recent study says this is too low. Instead, the model forecasts that the black holes might form at energy levels of no less than 9.5 TeV in six dimensions and 11.9 TeV in 10 dimensions. I don't understand any of that math. I know. We should have. We, we, we need Snork to help us. <laughs> Fascinating. Um, know your hadrons. There are large ones and small ones. If you meet a hadron, don't panic. <laughs> Tell it it is small. So, like, we're like wondering, you know, is, is this like, is it is it, is messing with stuff? Is that what's causing like so many like things? Like, is this what is it? What is the what is the effect of doing this though? Like, why do us so like I, I, any group of people think that they can do things that could like completely just destroy all of us? My my concern more or less is the fact that they're they're willing to enter another dimension, right? Like literally get into another dimension and then just see if our gravity has any effect on it. Like our gravity could completely eliminate that fucking dimension for all we know yeah we could destroy something else there we could, could destroy someone nother, else's there dimension could, there could be a whole nother like parallel fucking earth that exists in that dimension and everybody's fucking toast you know it's it's crazy that people are just like ah, it's fine. like you they're know, dumbing they're, they're tiny black holes didn't, they, we, didn't i say tiny come on they're dumbing people down and then there's really smart people that are doing this <laughs> Like what? <laughs> and and like all of us don't get a say in this. You know what I mean? It's like it's not like we get a vote. It's not like we get a say on whether or not they get to do this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's alien pride. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I mean, <laughs> it's the rainbow. <sighs> All right. I mean, I just just started. I just decided I'm starting a new band. Who wants to be in my band? Gravity's Rainbow. <laughs> Come on. We're totally inclusive. You don't even have to play an instrument. You don't even have to think you're a person. You could be a cat. You could be whatever. You know what I mean? Wide open, baby. Now sign me up to that. I mean, like, there's all kinds of like weird, you know, like. There's weird stuff happening, you know, like a lot of weird stuff. <sighs> yeah, that's what's going to happen. There, certain people are going to go, they're going to get to the next dimension, right? And then there's going to be a recording of. We're sorry. The number you've reached has been out of fucking, doesn't work anymore. I think that's what's going to happen. It's just going to be like a, a busy signal, then an opera is like, operator, can I help you? Uh, hello? Uh, you say something, I can't hear what he's saying. Oh, hello? <laughs> Steve's Freezer, the new horror movie only available on the Lucky Burrito Shop site. <laughs> Bye now. Snork said these things happen a lot, but it's just having it happen with a camera. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. 
that doesn't do anything to like ease my concern. Yeah, and their definition of time is distorted in these explanations, he says. Yeah, they can't exactly. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Yeah, you can't fix potholes, and yet you want another dimension. Exactly, salty. <laughs> it's like the most ridiculous thing ever. They're like, yeah, it's fine. We'll just, you know, I mean, we can't, we can't, we can't, you know. Yeah, black holes definitely made by this this device. You know, it's very complicated. You know, yeah. It, it matters. It's kind of freaky. Because it's so difficult to grasp what they're actually doing and how fucking utterly fucking unsafe that actually is. Yeah, uh, Snork said, thinks of the first three dimensions uh, as length and width, and then there is electrical, then magnetic through many different dimensions. Yeah, and so what? what's happening with this and then also what's happening with you know what i mean uh like like what what salty has been talking about is the the magnetic pole shifting as well like what is happening what are they doing to us that like are, are we gonna you know wake up in in one day and it's just gonna be absolute like you know even more chaos like <laughs> They made some really cool discoveries, though, recently. Uh, C found this. Uh, it was scientists find essential element for life in the ocean of Saturn's moon. So, in the ocean of Saturn's moon. Yeah. Trippy. Okay. So let me pull this up for us. I just thought that 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 headline is like what? Yeah, in the oceans of Saturn's moon. That's the kind of that's the kind of music that we would play on Gravity's Rainbow. We would play all things about <laughs> outer space themes and um, you know bacteria and the discovery of phosphorus on the moon of the Saturn in the bottom of the ocean. I mean, it's all connected somehow, right? Because it's all everything is always connected because we're all on the same planet, as far as we know, right? Are we in the same dimension? I Wait, don't know about this. Is dimension. this thing on? <laughs> I think the dimension thing is uh is uh interpretational. It's interpretational. <laughs> yeah, for some people. So this just came out on June fourteenth. <laughs> Which is today. A little larger. I'm trying. Okay. Well, I can't. I'm I know. Not seeing what you're doing in real time, so I'm just saying the thing I need to happen. I know. I'm trying. I, I'm not good at this. That's, doing good. Is that better? Mm -hmm. And deedly, deedly, dee. Can you see the headline? Yeah. Scientists find essential element for life in the ocean of Saturn's moon, Enceladus. That's right outside of Encinito, right? Ensenada. I don't remember. But um, it looks like a bacterium. It's actually, uh, it's, it's stuff. Uh, to further fuel the hot subject of aliens this week, scientists have detected the presence of phosphorus, one of the key, you know, uh, things you need to grow plants and stuff. In the uh, vast substance, subsurface ocean of Saturn's moon, Enceladus, uh, a discovery that provides further evidence of the moon's potential to support life. Scientists have long been fascinated with Saturn's sixth largest moon for its icy surface and mysterious hidden ocean that lies beneath. Enceladus has been a subject of discussion at a potential home for uh, uh, po uh, a potential home for extraterrestrial. Wait, life. who? Aliens? Extraterrestrial life. The recent <laughs> detection of phosphorus an essential chemical element for life is giving these conversations a whole new meaning. Utilizing data obtained from close fibrous flybys, fibrous flybys of Enceladus by NASA's Cassini spacecraft. That sounds snazzy, right? NASA's how do they even Cassini come up with this spacecraft? Like, how do they come up with these names? I'm sorry. They're all there about the scientists who made it. An international team of researchers discovered phosphorus compounds inside tiny grains of ice ejected from the moon's subsurface ocean so there you go it's right there it's frozen in an ice man like jurassic park or whatever 
Phosphorus is an essential element for living organisms. The compound's discovery indicates complex chemistry could be taking place beneath the moon's icy crust. Its presence and availability are seen as critical factors in determining the potential for life to exist and thrive in any given environment. Enceladus is known for having plumes or geysers of water that erupt through cracks in the moon's icy crust. Sometimes these can extend hundreds of miles into space, more than 20 times the size of the moon itself. Holy shit. Wow. That's a that's a crazy. Yeah, it's letting off steam. This is, here's an image of the plumes of water and ice coming through the beneath it. Neato. That's in 2009. It is. And then uh, it says uh, from 2004 to 2017, Cassini routinely flew through these plumes of ice particles using its suite of onboard instruments to analyze their chemical composition. The spacecraft was decommissioned in 2017, but its data continues to be studied today. We previously found that Enceladus Ocean is, is rich in a variety of organic compounds, said Frank Postberg, or Postberg, the planetary scientist who led the new study, referring to concentrations of sodium, potassium, chlorine, and other compounds discovered in a previous study in 2019. But now this new result reveals the clear chemical signature of substantial amounts of phosphorus. Uh, salts inside the icy particles ejected into space by the small moon's plume. It is, it's the first time this essential element has been discovered in an ocean beyond Earth. A closer exploration of Enceladus will be crucial to understanding the full extent of its habitability, future missions, and such as the proposed Enceladus Orbalander in the 2050s. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna bust out an Orbalander, of course. And, Why uh, do they have such a far away? Uh, it's twenty. It takes a while to build them, and then could potentially land on the surface of the moon and search for signs of life directly. Oh yeah, like you know, it's drones are cool, man. But they they ignore the fact that like like you know things are you know landing on our planet from somewhere else, and we're just going to keep doing that to other pe other other planets and, and moons. So this is crazy. I'm like, oh, this is neat. It was, we thought that was a really interesting uh, thing to to bring up that just came out. It uh, Snork said it, it is Saturn's lunch truck. Saturn's lunch truck. Yeah. The cat is really super. Um... Remember, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, or whatever. <laughs> are we? I think that book would get freaking. I think that book would get uh, canceled today. That book, remember? Men are from Mars, the women are from Venus. I think it would get canceled in today's in today in today. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to look up the psych project. Uh, that LHC is what Snork said. So Zainab said all of these dimensions are within our universe, so it's it's no real not really a different universe. The cat is being very clingy today. He's he wants to jump on Steve. He wants to jump on Skyla. He's coming. And, like, when I say jump on them, I mean, like, he's on the floor and he will jump up onto Steve's, like, shoulders from the floor. Where Did you get me something? I, uh, I was gonna. And then I figured you were gonna be like, I don't want that right now. Because that's what happens every time I give you something. Like that. But... Mm.
Well, that's interesting. Zainab said that she thinks our souls exist in another dimension. That's an interesting thought. That's an interesting, like, theory. I would like, I would like, I would like to explore that, you know, talk about that. It doesn't have to, we don't have to talk about things that are just based in facts. We can, we can talk about, you know, theories and, and, and stuff. It's a really cool, interesting way to think about it. <laughs> Salty said, uh, "I you, I know Uranus has life. It's called a hemorrhoid, and I and I named mine Tammy." Tammy, <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Oh, you guys crack me up. Cat, stop trying to get to my my stuff. This cat is like really like all over the place. Oh my gosh. Salty? I can't say that out loud. That would not be appropriate. Did you see what Salty said? I did not. Um, men are from Mars and women now have penises. Okay. Uh, Moving on. Norman said, shelter in place. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like you know, I is is it the the hadron, you know, the the hotbed of a collider that that's doing this to us? Are we doing this? What's happening? The hotbed of a collider. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, back on our planet, it's either that or whale penises. Yeah, it might be the whale penises. It very well could be. So they're. Um, like I said, I did have an order. This is out of order tonight. So, like, you know, this was... You're out of order. You're out of order. Okay. Um, let me bring this over here to this tab. <laughs> Norman says, "Don't trust Americans that can uh, that can uh, where to go." Damn it! He already retracted it. Never mind. I couldn't find it. It was funny. Norman's hilarious. Yes. It's funny. He'll be like, "I never blocked you, Lucky." <laughs> like, thank you, Norman. I love you too. <laughs> Um, did I add it? I didn't add it. I'm going to do that now. <laughs> so, th this is uh, about Coca Cola and the plastic bottles and other companies with their with their plastic bottles. Oh, plastic bottles. Because these plastics are having a long effect on, like, not just us. It's having an effect on, on everything on this planet. Yeah. And, like, 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 if we think about, like, where does plastic come from? What is plastic? Oh. It's surrounding us. It's everywhere. And it comes from big oil. Mm -hmm. All right? So, big oil uses... they use, that We use big oil to run our vehicles to create our medicine i say petrol based medicine because that's what a lot of it is a lot of it has these things in the byproducts of it and plastic is part of it mm -hmm. so like you know this is around us everywhere and then what do we do as humans what do we do with this you know with these the, i gotta pick up my dog poop you know, I got to pick up, not my poop, but like, you know, Leo's. I got to clean up after my dog if he goes to the bathroom. Obviously, I don't want people to want to step on it. But, you know, we, we were out, like, we took a walk the other day. But what is there? There's water bottles everywhere. And usually when I go on walks, I, I take a, a garbage bag to clean up. Of course, that day I didn't. So I didn't, like, have, like, 20 water bottles when I came back. 
um, but they were in like somebody's yard area. And we kind of like, there's like a, you know, but I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I'm like, people just throw their garbage wherever they want or it blows away. And then, then it's just like, yeah, no right responsibility anymore, you know, but, uh, so here we have an article that we're going to, we're going to talk about, uh, from, is it Grist? G-R-I-S-T, Grist? Yes. And I don't know what the date is on this. I just came across this. Uh, this is from May 23rd of 2023. Plastic bottles harm human health at every stage of their life cycle. So, you know, if it's harming us, who else is it harming, <laughs> right? Uh, a new report says uh, beverage companies like Coca-Cola must be held accountable for the supply chain impacts of their plastic. Now, that's something new, you know, because usually it's not like, you know, it's it's all put on the consumer, right? It's all our fault, like what we per, what we buy or what we this or what we that. But when everything's coming in plastic, everything, you know what I mean? Like how like the, it's very limiting on what choices you have. Do you want to do some of the reading on this article uh in 1973 a dupont can you engineer, read it you can make it a little bigger named nathaniel wyeth hang on i'm moving it patented the pet plastic bottle mm -hmm. oh. that's perfect and an innovative and durable alternative to glass since then production has skyrocketed to more than half a trillion bottles per year that's a lot. We were just talking about how much a tr you know thirteen trillion dollar bills would be. You know, this is a half a trillion bottles a year. How long they've been making plastic bottles since seventy three? I mean, we have things floating in the ocean that are like the size of Texas of plastic. <clears throat> Dude, that's a lot of fucking plastic bottles. So uh, since then, production has skyrocketed half a trillion bottles a year, driven by the beverage companies like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Nestle. It's no secret that most of these PET bottles, named for the polyethylene terephthalate plastic they're made of, are never recycled. And many end up on beaches or in waterways, where they degrade into unsightly plastic shards and fragments that threaten marine life. They do a lot more than that. But blighted, bre blah, 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 blighted bre beaches are the only tip of the ice uh, are only a tip of the iceberg, according to a new report co-published by the nonprofit Defend Our Health and Bloomberg Philanthropies Philanthropist people beyond proto uh, petrochemicals campaign. The PET plastic bottles caused hazardous chemical pollution at every stage of their life cycle. Plastics have a terrible Health burden on the population, said Mike Bellevue of uh, Def Defend Our Health's executive director. He urged the Environmental Protection Agency, the or EPA, to place more stringent limits on the use of toxic chemicals and called on beverage companies like Coca-Cola, named the number one plastic polluter for five years running. Way to go, <laughs> Coke, by the Break Free Form uh, from uh, Plastic Coalition. To replace at least half of their plastic bottles with reusable and refillable container systems by 2030. The beverage in industry has to be responsible and held accountable for the supply chain impacts of their plastics, Bellevue said. Well. Mm hmm So the report... Begins at the end of the plastic life cycle with littered PET plastic bottles that release cancer-causing pollutants and heavy metals into the environment. Although industry trade groups like to advertise PET as 100% recyclable, the reality is that 70% of the bottles are never collected for recycling. Instead, they're dumped, sent to landfills, or incinerated, causing air pollution that disproportionately affects the low-income communities of and communities of color. Of the remaining 30%, defend our health estimates that only one and only one third are turned into new bottles, and the rest are either wasted during the recycling process or downcycled into lower quality plastic products like carpeting. With global plastic waste generation expected to triple by 2060, experts say recycling infrastructure is unlikely to keep pace. 
Uh, recent research also shows the recycling process may be may unintentionally incorporate toxic chemicals into the recycled toys, kitchen utensils, and other products, potentially putting consumers at risk. Fantastic. Chemicals, uh, chemical releases also occur further up the PET bottle supply chain when bottles are sitting on the shelf. And independent uh, independent testing suggests that virtually all plastic bottles leach chemicals into the beverages they hold. These chemicals include antimony, antimony trioxide, a cancer-causing catalyst that used to speed up the production of PET plastic. A 2022 analysis from Defend Our Health found antimony and Diet Coke, Honest Tea, Dasani, and other Coca-Cola products at concentrations exceeding California's safe drinking water standard. In response to Gris' request for comment, Coca-Cola said, all of its products are safe and have been approved by regulators everywhere it operates. Consumers can be assured that our products are safe and of high quality. They always say, like, uh, it's because our regulate because the people that regulate this stuff the rest are, aren't aren't fucking. You know what I mean? They don't give a shit. They they do it based upon wh how much money they're going to make. The rest of the report focuses on feedstocks, the chemical building block of PET. The production of monoethylene glycol, for example, one of PT's main ingredients, causes some 60,000 pounds of carcinogen ethyl dioxide, ethylene oxide to be released into the air annually and is the country's leading source of pollution from 1.4 dioxin, a probable carcinogen. Processing and refining oil and gas to make other plastic feedstocks, chemicals like ethylene and paraxylene, can emit particulate matter, smog-producing volatile organic compounds, and aroma aromatic hydrocarbons. The extraction of that oil and gas itself causes the release of more than 1,000 chemicals, some of which may have health unrecognized health impacts. They have health unrecognized health impacts. Okay. That's a terrible sentence, but I said it anyway. <laughs> We're just barreling forward with a lot of these chemicals without understanding the implications for human health, said Rupa Christopherson. Yeah, you're better off. That's pretty close. Trying to find our do that than me. <laughs> defend our health director of research and a co-author of the report. She said the burden of chemical pollution falls mostly heavily on marginalized communities, including poor people and people of color who live near fossil fuel extraction sites and plants that produce PET or its chemical components and waste incinerators. According to the Defend Our Health people of color make up nearly two thirds of those facing serious cancer risk from living within six miles of ethylene oxide emissions from a petrochemical plant. Our future is in the course here is Yvette Ar Ariano, executive director of Houston-based environmental justice organization, uh, Fenceline Watch told uh, reporters on Monday at a press conference for the report, as a woman of color in the extreme right southern states captured by oil interests, we're disenfranchised and disproportionately affected. Many, including myself, are diagnosed with infertility, babies that are affected in the womb even before their first breath, and even after, and even after can pot potentially be diagnosed with the developmental issues, neurological issues, and immune issues. Bellevue said the EPA has done a good job identifying these disparities, but a terrible job correcting them. In general, he said the agency should do more regular plastic-related chemicals, do more, do more to regulate plastic-related chemicals, like adopting a federal limit for 1,4 dioxide in drinking water, or doxine, I don't know, enacting stricter standards for ethylene oxide pollution and setting rigorous pollution standards for other plastic related chemicals. Duh. Chemical uh, companies could help too by volunteeringly um, replacing hazardous chemical additives with safer alternatives. The EPA did not respond to Griff's request for comment in time for publication. More broadly, however, Bellevue wants to see fewer plastic bottles being produced in the first place. States like California are beginning to nudge companies in this direction by requiring some single use plastics to be eliminated and replaced with usable reusable systems like soda fountains and bottle refill stations. But green groups say that say the private sector has to step up as well. Defend our health wants soda makers like Coca-Cola to sell at least 
half of their beverages in re reusable or refillable packaging by 2030, a target twice as ambitious as Coca-Cola's current goal. In fact, Coke appears to be backsliding on the uh, on its reuse commitment. In its latest sustainability report, the company said refillable packaging accounted for only 14% of its products it sold in 2022, down from 16% the year before. Based on Coca-Cola's reported sales volume, the nonprofit Oceana estimates that the decrease means that the company generated 5.8 billion additional single-use bottles over the past two years in place of reusable packaging. Coca-Cola has a history of not meeting its promises. Matt Littlejohn, Oceana's senior vice president of strategic initiatives, told Grist, he said that he said the Defend Our Health report, which Oceana was not involved in, highlights how important it is for Coca-Cola to fulfill and exceed its existing targets, not only for the ocean's health, but for our health as well. Coca-Cola did not respond to Gris's request for comment about its reuse targets. Correction. This article has been updated to clarify that the report was co-published by Defend Our Health and the Beyond Petrochemicals campaign. So, I mean, I thought like that was really interesting. And then like the fact that like 70% of stuff doesn't <laughs> even get like here's a plant in uh in, in Texas. Um, you know, and 70% of them don't even get to to be recycled. And these because they are from petrochemicals, there is a process in which a lot of uh there are uh it's in Canada and a few places that we've we've covered where they actually are turning plastics back into uh, burnable fuel. Yeah. Like reusing the plastics. That's the thing is that there are solutions to this. And like, you know, this, the disparities of people being around these huge factories, like do people, are, are people like, like not concerned about that about these people because it's you know what i mean like something will happen that 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 is dramatic that happens like somewhere like flint or that happens somewhere like east palestine and we can we can target it and we can say yeah you know, these people there was an incident there was something that happened but what about the people that are living near these 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 places as well like these people matter as well as others and that's why i talk about people being like poisoned i'm talking about everybody and i have complete compassion and and like you know we need to we need to work together uh, as a people and decide that we are going to stand up against this yeah we have to have mutual aid to be able to deal with this because like people need to be able to get the help they need when it comes to this stuff like people you know, there's birth defects and just this, like, the crazy fertility rate shift that has happened in the last, like, four years is just, like, nobody's ever seen it do that like that before. It's, it's, it's drastic. And this is part of that. This is, like, part of the thing. You know, there's, it's 90, all... there's 90 other things that they're doing trying to reduce the population of this fucking planet actively. Yep. They're doing it in all sorts of different ways, all sorts of sne sneaky ways. They do this, like, you know what I mean? And then they have people drinking, like, and if you, even if you think about it, like, oh, well, I get my, my Coke in a can. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> What's inside the can, Steve? Plastic. Wait, a plastic bag inside every single can you consume anything out of. Yeah. Unless it says so differently. Because Coca-Cola... Or any of those sodas, they would actually eat through it. You could use Coca Cola to clean your toilet. You could use it to clean battery acid. Strip your fucking paint off your car. Yeah, strip paint off the car. Like point. you know, like clean. Doesn't it clean up rust and stuff? Oh, you know, no, like stuff. it cleans up all these things. It's actually not good for you to be digesting. You know, so I'm just asking if you if you are somebody who consumes it just to think about it. You know, I'm not going to tell you not to drink it. It's a, it's your choice, obviously. But, you know, just think about that uh, before you go pick up a, you know, before you pick up a thing of Coke, you know. Well, I cheer your ass. Meow, meow. Oz, because... Uh... That uh, you made short work of it, son. 
Ah, these motherfuckers. Yes, Joe Biden is a triumph of modern taxidermy. I would agree with that statement. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so lifelike. Yeah, it's pretty so crazy. Lifelike. You know, you can't even hardly tell. Tell what, Steve? I'm not going to tell you. My daughter's made me stop drinking that poison. Good girls, John. Good girls right there. Aces. You give them a high five for me. High fives. I like you being around. (laughs) I think uh, I think everybody should stop drinking that fucking shit. Yeah, I haven't. I don't even know the last time. I mean, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say that I don't love like fucking uh, an ice cold cream soda or something. You know what I mean? Like stuff tastes good, but it's really not good for you. (laughs) <laughs> in any way you it, can use it as an organic pesticide you know what, what i Mouse out? said what i figured out this is this is a similarity with soda and um you know or pop or whatever you call it where you live um <laughs> oh, methan- me <laughs> methamphetamine <laughs> we live in the same i'm not talking to you directly i'm talking to everyone who might be watching this at some point oh so methamphetamine is like way too much for your body and your brain to process and your liver to actually process. So when people do meth and they do a big shot of meth or they smoke a bunch of it or whatever, their body actually processes as much as it can and you pee out the rest, right? Soda does exactly the same thing with sugar because refined sugar is virtually like the same kind of, you know, thing to your body as the methamphetamine is. It can't process it. It's just impossible. It's just you don't, you know, your 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 fucking uh, your system doesn't run that hot, you know. And if you if you did run that hot, you'd be fucking screwed because you'd have to probably just do methamphetamine and drink soda all day just to be normal. But thankfully, none of you are like that, uh, as far as I know, uh, allegedly. <laughs> so that being said, soda and methamphetamine are they really that different? Not to your body, they're not. Your liver doesn't give a fuck which one you do. It can't handle either. Well, yeah, and then if you think about it, a lot of the medications that are used for, like, ADHD are very similar to that as well. So, you know, it's just something to think about. We're not telling (laughs) you to not do it. I'm telling you not to do this. Salty recommends a a cult classic enema. Makes for a wicked fun enema, you see. Oh, um, you need meth to wean off the coke. No, that's the wrong. You got it in the wrong order. Man. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be running in circles. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, this guy, this guy, uh, if, if you guys watch Steve's channel and if you watch uh, his TikToks, he did a, He did a story on this guy. And right. you'll, you'll want to check it out because it's hilarious. Oh, um, so you should have queued that up. That could have been, been like, here's a story from Steve. <laughs> Well, I don't have it. I know. I told you I was covering this story. I remember now. Yeah, you could have had it ready. Sure. So this guy was busted um, with a crack pipe, apparently, uh, on his lap. And he just like fell asleep. And he's in Rhode Island. You know, he's our next. He's Rhode Island. He's next door to us. No, I'm trying to make this bigger. How do yeah, I? Yeah, no, the sugar does go into high density lipids, but the the body cannot fucking process all of that sugar. That's that's the thing, and they, it just will adhere to your fucking arteries and different parts of your body. It can't do it though, you know. So that's why the the soda is bad, and also the meth, not so good. Just saying. All right, I don't know. I don't know if this this is an actual like good video to play. Uh, let's see. It's, I it's I a, didn't play the video before. It's a pretty great video. I mean, I remember it from when I did the story on it. Okay, I'll play it. Hmm? Boo boo boo! He's kind of wasted. Uh, oh. so I'm gonna pat you down. Yes, yeah, sir. He's like, oh yeah, sure. Um, sorry, I was just talking to unicorns. No, not at all. Oh no way, dude! Really? Yes, yes. I was just taking. I was just on my way back from court. Bro. Well, arrest is gonna come check you out, man. I can't let you go. You were. 
literally choking in your sleep. Somebody flagged me down about it. Oh, I have sleep apnea. I'm sorry. Well, and then you have a crack pipe in your hands. So it's like... Wait, sorry. Listen, I, yeah. I have a body camera. Obviously, yeah, the other thing I have is recorded. You know that. And <laughs> I, what I've observed is on camera, so I can't pretend I didn't. He's you know, like, no. so a is going to yeah. come here. Oh, and they're going to check you out. You know, you, as far as I know, there's no drugs anywhere, so I no. can't. You know, so there's not a criminal investigation. There's more a health or well-being check type Thank thing. Thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I obviously have to document it, you know. <laughs> hmm. Obviously, you have to document it. What's that? What do you got there? Uh, a little a crack pipe, uh, a little, little heroin in the... Uh, oops. Little... Show how she, you do it. Oh, Okay. Little, uh... So he's like, yeah, um, I'm going to use the body cam excuse this time, you know, and so, so this guy was caught in Rhode Island, uh, he, he's, and now he's been accused of, uh, sex abuse of a, of a child. Yeah. Why is it not oh, enlarging it? Oh, there it goes. That was a little sketchy. You know, yeah, he was pulled over, nodded out, smoking crack, and everything. So, so uh, I mean, I okay. just, you know, so I, I came across this story and I'm like, wait a minute, wait, now this is a different charge. So, an expert island, uh, Republican councilman found passed out in his car while holding a crack pipe has been busted again, this time for molestation charges involving a 12 year old girl. Like, what the uh, fuck? He was, he was a white guy, John. You know, the cop didn't feel like he, he the cop was calling him dude. The cop was like, dude, man. Really? Well, I think no it's way. because he was. Oh, shit. You're a politician. Oh, fuck. Damn. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm supposed to give you a pass, but my cam's on. Uh, Sorry. Sorry, buddy. I can't give you a pass like I do to everybody else in Rhode Island. Well, see, this is this is a prime example as to why they shouldn't give him passes. Uh, so Matthew Riley uh, resigned in disgrace for the Cranston City Council when cops discovered him last month lying uh, lying back in his in his car seat, blacked out with mouth agape. <sighs> Again, someone reported he was literally joking. So Riley was charged with drug possession after he and later resigned from his council seat on Thursday. He was taken. He was back in legal trouble from an arrest from North Kingston for an alleged child molestation. The Providence Journal reported, um, citing the Cranston Police Chief Michael Winglist. Winglist is, is that? Am I saying that right? Winglist. Sure. Yeah. Close enough. I know Cranston, Cranston, Cranston. Cranston. You say Cranston because in Rhode Island, because in Rhode Island you talk different. You talk different. You, do. you say Rhode Island. People from around everywhere else don't say Rhode Island. They don't say Rhode Island. No, they don't say it like that. No, and I lived in Rhode Island as a kid. I grew up there. That's why I talk like that. Those guys sound like me when they're talking. I hate them. They sound like Especially you. Especially the cop. Yeah. Uh, you never want to run into a, a freaking state trooper in Rhode Island. Yeah, mm -hmm. they really do wear those costumes that or the outfits yes. uh, that you see. Uh, what was that movie? Me, myself, and Irene. I think they really do wear those. Yeah. They really, really wear that. Okay, so anyway, back to the story. On Thursday, Riley was uh, back in legal. Oh, uh, Riley was charged with first and second degree child molestation, sexual assault, and uh, enactment of a person under the age of 16. And, or enticement. I mean, not enactment. 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 I was like, what? Did they put on a play? No, I didn't mean that. Oh, my God. Um, like a Mountie. Exactly, General. Meow, meow. Yeah, they look like that. They look like Deadly Do Right in the cartoon. Yes, they do. They honestly do. They really wear that. And then, you know, you. And they look pissed off about having to wear it too. You know, yeah, like and if you get pulled over, just don't look at the hat. Just look him in the eye. <laughs> don't, because I'm. Don't I don't, 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 don't want to laugh while we're covering this this awful, okay. you know, part of the story. Okay. We can talk about the Mounties after. Uh, the buzz was the accumulation of a month long investigation sparked by a complaint filed by a legal guardian of a twelve year old girl, according to the newspaper. Like this, is so messed up, so messed up. 
So he was arrested with possession of a controlled substance on May 15th, about a week into the probe involving the child. The, the alleged crimes involving the girl took place on May 3rd, the journal reported, citing court records. That's why he was smoking crack. It was all... Uh, oh, I don't know if that's the cause of it. Well, um, maybe, I maybe think that why he was all fucked up on fentanyl. I, I think that he just wasn't making. He's obviously just not a good human. Not, um, district court person. judge uh, ordered uh, Riley held without bail, and he undergo a competency hearing. Mm. Winquest told the outlet. Go ahead. Riley's lawyer, Michael Lepazera Jr told the Daily Beast his client entered a not guilty plea to the molestation charges. With these types of charges, I could see the general public and even close friends instantaneously turning their backs on Mr. Riley and drawing knee-jerk conclusions. Well, I mean... Lepazera said in an email to the outlet. You have to say it like that. Lepazera. Okay. Because that, well, because they're from Cranston. Right? Is it in the Cranston area? Yeah, it's Cranston. Yeah, that's how everybody talks there. I simply ask everyone to refrain from public ridicule and gossip and allow the legal process to unfold. Um, yes, as, obviously, it, you, you know. know. In, in, in the ordinary course. While we may not have the perfect system of justice in this country, as nothing is perfect, my 30 years as a lawyer allows me to state that we have a near perfect judicial system as could exist, and we should trust in the system to be the final educator of the facts, the law, and any legal. Outcome. Okay, that sounds like legal bullshit. That sounds like a lawyer talking. Last month, Riley told the officer who shook him awake in his car that he had sleep apnea. Well, you have a crack pipe in your hands, the cop tells him in the video footage. Yeah, he, he did say that. Like, whoops. I, uh, uh, really, Riley, really, Riley, initial, initially denied having narcotics in his vehicle, telling police he smoked earlier and was heading to work at family court. When the cops found crack cocaine in the console, he admitted to having relapsed after 13 years of sobriety, in part because of a really bad divorce. Hmm. Well, what about this child? A really bad divorce. Why? In the footage, police were seen testing the crack they found and the residue-coated vehicle, which contained fentanyl. Uh, a resi uh, a residue-coated vehicle, which contained fentanyl. Okay, so the little jar had traces of fentanyl? That, that was... I thought they found, like, actual bindles of fentanyl. I don't know. Um, the other story, I'm pretty sure they detailed it. Well, it says right here he was charged with the unlawful possession of crack cocaine, fentanyl, and misdemeanor and released ahead of his June 15th arraignment. But, like, what happened with, you know what I mean, with the child? Yeah, there's no, that's just like a fucking clickbait headline. That's Somebody said, I saw the photo before reading the headline and I was hoping it was Hunter Biden. You can't say that. That's, I'm reading a comment. You can't. You can't read comments. So here's the guy right here. This is uh this is the guy who was caught. Uh we'll we'll definitely be following up if we hear more about this story. Uh, you know, it, it's the next state over. And uh so we should uh definitely if we if we catch this again, we will we will try to keep you guys up to date on this. We need to keep children safe from people. <laughs> like we need and you know what? Let me just say. That it's not a right wing talking point to say we want to keep kids safe. Just saying, there are predators everywhere. They come in all walks and sh like you know from all walks of life, um, including this person. Uh, that you might I don't know if you guys will n recognize this this YouTuber, um, but she yes she uh, has been caught grooming children. Oh, am I, am I allowed to say that word? You can't say that. I'm sorry. A dog groom. Dog. Everything you've said so far. There's dog groomers though. Like, are they allowed to say that? You can say dog groom. Dog groom. As long as you don't say Cesar Milan. Okay. Because that will get you in trouble in Denmark. What is that? Is that? Is that what uh, Norman said? And Norman is saying a lot of things. He he's he was an Irish 
lad that lived in Denmark. Um, lives in Denmark since uh, 1776, or for a while. Anyway, I I lost track of where the comment went. God damn it! But yeah, um. We need to be keep, but the thing is, is that like saying we need to keep kids safe is not a right wing talking point. It literally means we need to keep kids safe. Yeah, that's the funny part about it is like the language has been co opted. Everything, everything that you think you just would be just common sense is like the opposite. Yeah, it's literally like that Superman episode where everything is backwards. It's that. So I've, I know who this person is because I remember, you know, like years ago, like Skyla telling me about her and she had a, it was called Miranda Sings and she always wore this like really weird lipstick and like she acted like just completely really, really weird. Like, I mean, the behavior of this person, Colleen Ballinger, Ballinger, what is it? Ballinger. Bollinger. Uh, uh, so you could say Bollinger. Bollinger. Or Bollinger, if you like. Bollinger. 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 I don't even know. Right. So this is on Pop uh, Pop Crush, and this is June eighth, twenty twenty three. So she is a content creator um, from YouTube, uh, and she has she's she's famous for her grading Miranda Singh's character and is under fire following a series of bombshell allegations from a former fan. So what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? We keep kids safe. I mean, from these kind of people as well. Um, you know, just because you know people people that that. <laughs> <laughs> people that want access to children are, are the people that we need to keep our eyes on, especially, you know what I mean? People just because they're like, I love kids or whatever. Like you know, we need to keep an eye on, we need to do better as a society to protect the children. Yeah, I agree with that. Josh, he's like, uh, for me, if people are talking about keeping kids safe and the conversation about dating apps isn't brought up, it's like it's fucking pointless. That's a, yeah. Like those that. apps are like every like that is how they're accessing children, and then they also they start speaking to the children. A lot of times they'll start speaking to them either on those apps or they get to children through uh, other social media forms that are less likely ones that people might not think of. Like they'll they'll get them on a Patreon sometimes. They'll get them on Pinterest. You know what I mean? You don't like I I use Pinterest. And I wouldn't ever think that like they could target people that way, or that I, or that there even was a messaging app part about it. But there is, and then they will get them to go to other applications. Oh, excuse me, get kids to go to other applications, and you know, like anything that has a messaging thing, a private messaging. If there is adults trying to get children to go to somewhere where they can privately DM with them, then that is a red flag, and that is an issue. Yeah, I agree. I think the uh, all the social medias are, you know what I mean, at risk in that regard. And every dating app is as well. If they don't fucking, you know, if they're not strict about that, then that's an easy way for 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 predators to access kids. Um, I'm just as concerned with that as I am with the fucking them teaching these ideologies in schools to fucking, you know, kindergartners and shit. Yeah. Like it, it's, and, it's and, an approach. that's like, it's, it's multifaceted. It's multifaceted. It's absolutely. And anything that you poke a hole in gets you, you know, labeled as, as, as a hateful bigot monster, fucking whatever. Yeah. And, like and if like, you watch the Sunday show, you valid, know, <laughs> any valid thing, exactly. Any valid point that you try to make, is immediately conflated with some other bullshit and dismissed. Your point is dismissed and never addressed. There is no good faith, like debate about it happening. As far as I can tell, people are just like, fuck you. You're a monster. I cancel you. You're done. And that's it. And then people just bail. Okay. Well, that's on them because 
yep. the point is still fucking important. I'm not going to stop talking about it because no, it I, you know, it's crazy. Cause I told my neighbor, like I went over and talked to her. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about like, you know, the things that are being, you know, like the, I'm, I'm diving more into like what is being taught to the children in school and the curriculum and stuff like that. And how the kids are being targeted in that way and directly at school. Um, and one one of the one of the things that they're doing is books that they're doing. They they have certain books that they are publishing. So that's where I'm kind of like starting to dive into that aspect of it, um, and to see what they're going to try to bring out for the next school year for a lot of kids. Like that's going to be you know I mean something I'm really like I'm looking into. So if anyone does have any information about you know any uh, curriculum that is not appropriate for children that is being pushed into the schools, please let me know. Um, I am, I'm, I'm building some, uh, some shows around that. Uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, saying that I want to keep kids safe literally means I want to keep kids safe. It doesn't mean, it doesn't imply some like, you know, some ulterior motive or something else. It means like if someone in my neighborhood, if their kid, if I saw their kid was like going to get hit by a car or they tripped and they fell and they were hurt, I would go and I would help that child the same way that I would of my own. If I think that someone's like harming children in some way or exposing them to something that they shouldn't be exposed to, I'm going to speak up. If I see someone harming a child, if I think someone's harming, I'm going to, I was a mandated reporter, you know, like uh, working at the, you know, the shelter that I did, the homeless shelter and, and, and other, you know, environments that I was in and, uh, you know, the volunteer work that I've done like throughout my whole life. Like, like Vicky said, like, you know, like it's just, it's intergrained into us to keep kids safe. Um, and to twist that and to say that that is a right wing talking point. Like I said that to my neighbor, I was like, yeah, I was accused of being a right winger by saying I wanted to keep kids safe. And she laughed. She was like, what? You know, like she's got four young kids. They know that if something ever happens, they can come and knock on my door no matter what. No matter what, they know, and they have before. I've had I've had some of the neighborhood kids come and knock when they, you know, like they they they, they couldn't get in their house, or they needed to call their parent, or whatever it was. Like I'm one of the 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 adults in the neighborhood that the you know the parents know and the kids know uh, I'm a safe person to talk to, and to have accusations of coming at me from people within like you know the actual like the, that actually know who i am come at me and pretend that i have any intention of harming a child is absolutely insane it's disingenuous and it's taking away from the focus of actually keeping them safe it's not a right-wing talking point. It's not homophobic to not want kids exposed to things and to not want them exposed to a pride flag. And that is a hill I will die on. As a parent, as a decent human being, I would, no, absolutely not. No. I covered more of that on the Sunday show. And that's why I had to push this show back. Norman retracts everything, Josh. <laughs> Norman always retracts them. That's not new. Yeah. I'm more surprised when he doesn't. Drive safe, yep, X. Okay, so this person um, has been accused. And obviously, you know, we have to take accusations how they are. Um, then things need to be, you know what I mean, details and, and all of that and evidence, evidence-based. We need evidence to, to, you know what I mean, for, for things to be substantiated and all of that. But this article comes in to say that she's a content creator. Uh, famous for her grading Miranda Sings character is under fire. Uh following a series of bombshell allegations from a former fan in a scathing new YouTube video, social media content, real, uh, realtor, Adam, what, what is his name? What the, Mick McDonald's? No. Oh. Do you see it? I can't really see where we at here. Uh, any McIntyre. 
McIntyre? Is that is that Walter it? McIntyre? Yeah, McIntyre. Adam McIntyre. Okay. Yeah. Who started a friendship with Colleen when she when he was only thirteen, claims that she, you know, the G word, and used him uh, when he was a minor between seventeen and twenty twenty. So Adam's allegations include calling inappropriately communicating with minors about sexual positions and more, manipulating him to, into performing free labor for her, gaslighting, by, bullying, and more. He came forward with similar allegations in 2020, but it was largely silenced by Colleen's fans. It was, uh, was recently inspired to speak out again following another YouTube video exposing Colleen um, and her fandom. So there is gra there is some graphic language and his and descriptions uh, that are in this. So you know if this bothers you, if it, you know what I mean, it might be a good time to check back in or or skip past this part. I'm not gonna go into great great detail on this. Um, I'm not gonna play the video or anything right now, but I will have the link for this if you do want to look into this further. It will be in the show notes. So, um. So this this person Adam has has two hundred and six thousand subscribers on our platform, and they put a they put up a video um, on the seventh of June, and Adam posted YouTube digging into his former relationship with her, accusing her of doing these things. Um, he said it was one sided, inappropriate relationship began when when he was thirteen, and she was already in her thirties. And he acted as an unpaid intern for the YouTube phenom phenom for four years. His video includes numerous screenshots of alleged text messages, group chats, DMs, and other media receipts, including audio clips. I mean, oh. I'm just pointing this out because I won't I don't want people to overlook anybody as being somebody that is like a red flag. You know, listen to your gut, follow evidence, listen to what's happening, pay attention. Because these people are everywhere. These people are literally everywhere. If I my gut gets any bigger, I won't have to lean over to listen to it. Oh my god. Goals. So apparently she made fun of fans' mental health and um and, and she would body check him for being skinny and stuff. Like there's just a lot to this. But and then, you know, she would love bomb him, make him feel special. Um she talked about, you know, intimate divorce details and uh he said that he, she abandoned him in an unfamiliar city and you know like there's all kinds of details of this if you are interested and if you know what I mean I just want people to know because I know some people like they're you know if, they, if you have younger children some people were are really fans of hers as well salads Vicky's and making salads. I guess they many fans accuse her of queer baiting and mocking the LGBT uh, community. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not gonna get too far into that. Um, but I wanted to make people aware of it. Okay. Pop crush. Oh, mm -mm. Good to have goals, Oz. It's good to have goals, man. Oh my gosh. So, you know, I wanna I wanna show you guys, you know, Pride has been completely co-opted. Completely fucking co-opted. Come on. Like anybody who's saying that it's not, I don't know. I don't know where well, that's just hateful. That's just you're just homophobic and you hate gay people. Yeah, I'm part of the LGBT community. Yeah. So I'm not, and I'm not going to justify that with anybody. And anybody who wants to question whether or not I'm an ally or not, yeah, you know what? You can fuck off. 
that's Ooh. that's just where I'm at with it because I'm sick of people coming at me and telling me that I'm like part of the community or not part of the community or whatever the whatever their assumption is that fits their narrative that they're gonna use to be a freaking bully and to push you know push an agenda you know so anyway oh, good. I'm I'm totally good with uh, calling anybody out who's behaving that way. So, I mean, even the CIA is like, oh look, they put up a tweet saying CIA's 2030, uh, 2023 theme for Pride. Oh, look at that! That's so inclusive. Look how wellness, equality, LGBTQ plus community, openness, me. Like, fuck these guys. If I was going to get brought somewhere to get tortured, I would hope there would be rainbows. I mean, yeah. You you, you know, you know hope at am. least the, the Central the Intelligence singer. Agency is going to have pride. I'm the lead singer of the Gravity Rainbow. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous for anyone to think that they're not co-opted when we have Lockheed Martin freaking making rainbow socks before and we have CIA pride and all of this. And then, you know, like, have you guys seen what happened at the White House? Yeah, and our kids, yeah, but our kids need it, right? Because what is pride about? Rainbow pride is about the lesbian community the gay community and the bisexual community it's in the name it's about sexual orientation there is no reason for this to be pushed on any children there's no reason for there to be pride inclusive everything like that they they have completely freaking taken it and ran with it and i'm so freaking done because then people are like oh well if you don't support it then you're like blah 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 it's like no that doesn't equate to that and you don't get to fucking decide that no because the, it has been taken it's been co-opted. Every every corporation, every government agency, every town square for this entire month. Yeah, and it's just events. It's everywhere. just and it's just pushing. It's, it's a money grab and it's pushing an agenda. Well, it's hurting us. Yeah. It's hurting the actual people that are part of Pride. It's eliminating certain factions of it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. It's like you know, pride used to be like this, like kind of like you know, we just we want the same equality and the same, you know what I mean, the same rights, the same ability. We want to be able to marry. We we started to get that acceptance from people, and then they just scooped it up. They freaking I I I they co opted it freaking completely. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, as as far twenty years ago. You know, 16 years ago when Obama is putting fucking rainbows on, on drones and dropping bombs with rainbows on them. Like, yeah. Literally. Do you think it's bought then? Do you think it's caught out? It's fucking been co-opted at all? Like, really? You know? Fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, what do you mean I'm speaking in too many generalities? Like Richard no Medhurst is like... It's it's Biden's fucking rainbow death fucking cult, whatever. Mm -hmm. So like that's literally what it is. That's not it's not an exaggeration of what's happening, and people people uh, talking about any aspect of of that pride movement get labeled as fucking monsters, and it's ridiculous. It's it's not stupid. How 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 is it too many generalities? There's there's a lot of facets to it. It's not. Not yeah to generalize anything well and the people i'm talking okay. about there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of generalities because it's a lot of different people coming at me yeah. uh saying yeah. these things so this is i'm going to play this real quick this is what happened for pride what look do you see the placement of that flag they put it in the front set in the middle like i'm not even like you know what i mean like like whatever patriotic nationalistic no i'm yeah i'm not but they shouldn't be putting pride in the middle right there that that seems offensive to me i don't like that flag i do not like this this is not my pride flag this is not my pride flag at all uh transgender is an ideology a transsexual is an actual medical condition and it is a mental health condition 
The rainbow flag actually <laughs> was inclusive for everybody. It was. And now they keep adding things and altering it. And that's not my flag. That doesn't represent me. And there's a lot of people that feel that way that are part of the LGB community and T. And we say LGB and T now. And the reason why is it's le uh, lesbian, gay, and bi, but also, and it's anti because the, the T is not part of the, the sexuality part of it, which is a lesbian, gay, or bisexual. That is not part of it. The T is, it was added before because it was to be inclusive with a lot of them. Like, it's kind of like, you know, the, the, the transsexuals are cousins of ours. All the uh, rest of those acronyms are no, lo are no longer part of our, our, of what the LGB anti community is. They've taken things way too far, but, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's play this. I'm going to mute us for a minute. Welcome to the lighthouse. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Year. Happy Pride Life. Yeah. Transgender children. You are beautiful. You are heard. You belong. You are understood. You are loved. And you belong. Yeah. Some of the bravest and most inspiring people I've ever known. And I mean, you're welcome. Good folks. Can we take a little video? Hi, Mr. President. It is an honor of France rights and human rights. Oh, it's a video. Oh, it's a video. <laughs> Are we topless at the White House? When did you find out the special counsel was headed down this track? And why? Um, so that was something. Mm. That's what, uh, so that was a, a, a tr the White House has banned this topless transgender influencer from events. So this is from 61323. Uh, and so there has just been video after video of them just shaking themselves topless at the White House. And, you know, Biden saying these are the most brave people ever. And I don't understand. I don't understand. If you are a transsexual, that is a mental health. That is in the DSM-5. Like, why are they bl like blasting it out there like that? Why are they topless and doing those things? Like, it's just, it just, it seems way too far for me. It doesn't seem appropriate for me at all. And it just seems like a mockery. It, it is really, it really, this one little clip showed like the mockery of what this country has become. So this goes in to say that the Biden administration says transgender activist Rose Mignota uh, will not be invited back to the White House following her decision to go topless during the Pride Month event on the South Lawn. Yeah, like how do you do that without being inappropriate? Like how do you like get your hands there like that? Like whoa. Did somebody cover up for them or whatever? I don't know. That just seems a little bit odd. Um, but they asked, uh, when they were asked about the behavior, a spokesperson said to Newsweek in a statement, it was inappropriate and disrespectful at any event at the White House. So, you know, but you're calling these people brave. They're the most brave people ever. They came there and they, they did that. But now they're not, you know what I mean? Like, it just... This is not. Yeah, no, this is this is not fucking balanced. Do you think that's balanced thinking, Josh? Really? That somebody wants to just be, I decided today I'm going to be a girl. And I'm going to be like a really loud redheaded girl with freckles. And I'm going to paint freckles on my face. And I want you to call me Cindy Lou from now on. 
everybody call me Cindy Lou because that's my name because I'm a redheaded, freckle-faced girl and I'm the cutest thing that ever lived. And nobody would think that was odd if Steve just decided to fucking do that and everybody just backed him up. You know, everybody's, oh, yeah, you're right, Steve. You are Cindy Lou. Look at those freckles, though. You look fabulous, girl. You know, like that's the fucking, that's not balanced thinking. That's just like somebody with an impulsive impulsivity to do a thing and being prompted by external fucking peer pressures and other fucking craziness. And there's a lot of kind of thing. They need to be talking we to don't people about the things that are making them feel this way before they actually, you know, force you to call them a different thing and, and want you to perceive them in a certain way. There needs to be some kind of transitional period there. People. Hey, okay. So hang on. Let's, let's, I'm just saying that like, people just go along with, that whole notion like without questioning it and it needs to be it needs to be questioned it needs to you just need to slow down and like think about it i'm not saying every we don't know that person's history right. i don't we know don't know their... about that person or their situation i still don't think it's appropriate what they're doing i still don't think it's appropriate to be having a huge like thing like that 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 People are are using pride as like some kind of like inclusive thing when it's actually like that's that's not like that's make like that's that's making a mockery of us. Yeah, I that's I'm part of that community. It's literally like I have a right to say that I don't agree with what they're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the the DSM five that I'm talking about, yep, is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And if you look it up. It is actually in the, the DSM-5. And I don't agree with, like, you know what I mean? That the DSM is, like, some kind of, like, holy grail of, like, you oh, know, no, all the information. But it is documented that, that it is a disorder, that it is seen uh, as, as a mental health disorder. Uh, it's called gender dysphoria because otherwise, if, if, if we had, you know what I mean, uh... Otherwise, it would mean that that <laughs> that it's normal. Like it would be normal for us to feel like we are the opposite or whatever gender that we are. And, and then it's, it's actually a recognized mental health disorder. We're going to be talking more about this tomorrow night with our friend Buck Angel, who is a transsexual and who has been a transsexual in transition for 30. They transitioned 30 years ago. So we're going to be having a conversation about that with people that are actually uh have been part of this community and been advocating for transsexual rights and for trans and helping other people for 30 years tomorrow and protect your kids hmm. um define mental illness i don't think that it is i don't uh <laughs> really josh well, he's like, if you if you think it's you think it's not normal to do these things. I don't think it's normal for there to be a six hundred percent increase, and it's autistic mostly or borderline personality people with borderline personality disorder who are getting caught up in in the transgender and and that are getting caught up. The numbers are absolutely exploding. The absolutely exploding. I've I've done a lot of research into this. I don't know if you have, but I have. I've done several shows, and I've shown the how much how much money they make off of these off of the the kids, if especially if they transition when they're children. Um, I've been doing research into Lupron, which is the puberty blocker that they are giving children. And you know what? Who they use that for? You might know what Lupron is. They use it for predators. To medically castrate them. That is the drug they are giving to children. I don't think you should dismiss what she's saying. I don't think it's a pissing contest, Josh. Right? It's not a pissing contest. We're definitely Absolutely not, not. In a competition. I'm not you. in any kind of competition. In fact, with anybody. Quite the opposite. If you have something to share, then please do. You know, don't. Yeah. If you have some, if you have some your... research, then well, on, please. Let me, let me say the thing because. Josh is like, this is the thing I'm focused on is the, the apps and how pervasive that is. 
Absolutely. Yeah, and you can be. This is also happening simultaneously in real time. Yeah, so, like uh, that's no, the thing no, is it's that your, it's your tone in the chat, bro. It's not. It's not that you've said I dismiss what you've said. Not at all. But I, you know, you know how you are. <laughs> I know how you are. It's fine. We still love you. And and ultimately, if you have shit to fucking share, please. Yeah, I've done a lot, a lot of research. No, we have identified a lot of the... Pro There's just so many factors to what we're talking about right now, bro. There's so many factors. There's so many things... That what is, okay, so you're making... You're saying that we haven't identified the problem. What is the problem then? Yeah, if you have more information, that's, that's, that's always going to be helpful. Yep. No matter what we think we fucking know. It might not be a comfortable subject for most people. I get it, that. But nice. there's a huge percentage of people in D.C. alone. The percentage is almost 3% where the rest of the population, it, it's like it, there, the statistics are are out. Like the numbers don't match up with what's happening. Absolutely do not match up. What inherently makes a mental illness? I'm not like, oh my gosh. See, now you're you you're you're gonna you're focusing on just that aspect of it. Is do you do you do you think that it is the, Neil, stop. do you think that it is uh this isn't happening everywhere? This isn't happening in other countries, this is happening in certain countries. Mm-hmm. I didn't make, I didn't put this in the DSM-5. No. I well, didn't make I mean, the, I didn't make this a mental health d diagnosis or disorder. No. These are people, I've talked to people who are actual transsexuals. Like I said, I'm having Buck Angel on tomorrow who is a transsexual uh, and transitioned 30 years ago was one of the first people. In, I think actually he was the first person in California to transition. So I hope you'll tune in tomorrow night and maybe you can get some more answers there with that. But yeah, I, I didn't put it in the DSM. No, I know. I, I know you didn't say that, but I'm just saying that it is a recognized mental health disability or, or not disability. It's a, it's a mental health uh, diagnosis to have uh, to be gender, just to have gender dysphoria. The same thing as if you have something like bulimia or anorexia. It's the same type of thing. You don't, you wouldn't send a, a, a bulimic or an anorexic to just like, oh, let me just go give you liposuction. No, you're going to, you're going to try to understand why they're feeling that way. There should be years of counseling. That's how it used to be. Actually, I went through this with friends. 15, uh, 16 years ago, you know, like that's what it was. You had to go through years of therapy. You had to have a diagnosis. And then like, it was a process. Now what they're doing is you, they have clinics for this and you can have a phone call with that clinic and not even have to see a physician or a doctor or anybody in there. And they will, and you can get hormones for your child. I don't, that, that's alarming to me. There is no screening process. There's no, like, there's nobody, like, protecting these children from, like, just doing it. What makes it a, a, a mental illness? I think you, I, you're getting sidetracked. Why don't you just... Do, what do your thing? You don't what? have to address everything that Josh is saying. He's like derailed the show. Yeah. That that's <laughs> the way I figure it is like if you know if a conversation is already you're already past it you're already past it. I have a problem with with them doing this we like where it's it's, it's a time. huge it's a huge social media influencer doing this at the White House. People look up to this person and think that this is okay to go and you know do that with you know shaking your stuff at the White House. I I just don't think it's appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate to do in front of children. I also don't you know I have that you know like I don't think that it's appropriate to do drag in front of children either. 
Because that is sexually, like, that's sexualized in nature. Like, what? I think, I think there's also circumstances where a drag thing could be completely innocuous. And a person, a man dressed as a woman could be a perfectly innocuous. Yeah, person. that, yeah. And, and vice versa. And, like, if that wasn't the focus of the thing, and it was really about something else that was happening, and it wasn't about you know, them doing risque dancing and, you know, trying to be sexy and all that stuff. If it wasn't that, and it was just maybe comedy or something, that could be perfectly fine. Right. I mean, yeah. I don't have a problem with children seeing it. It's seeing I don't have it. a problem with, no, of course that not. Involved. That's yeah. part of the fucking issue. It's the fact that they're doing it at bars. Absolutely. They're doing it. And, and there is inappropriate things happening at certain ones. Not everyone, but like, why are these big, huge corporations like Walmart funding this? Why are they pushing this? Why is there such a huge explosion of this? I'm asking questions. Yeah, no. Josh is like, yes, Steve. Steve can't handle my questions. I'm like, I I love the questions, bro. But when they when they go around the corner and back again and stuff, like you, you meander. Like, well, I'm like, do you have more information pertaining to what we're talking about right now? And you're like, well, what do you what do you think a mental illness is? You know what I mean? Like or just brag it, bring it right back to another place. Like let's let's just keep the momentum of I ha I deal with my own mental health, health illnesses yeah. and I recognize that I have mental health uh, you know things that I deal with with my mental health. And how do I know that like it's not nor it's, it's a mental health because I I mean like it's not it's not normal within the society at all it's not it's not something that 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 is that is uh, you know like it, it's the same thing as if someone is bulimic or anorexic or depressed or or has anxiety or ptsd these are all things that are outside of the scope of what is you know set to be like or what's socially acceptable anyway in most circumstances i'm like i i'm sure i've i've been dealing with mental health issues since I was a little kid and I'm not trying to dismiss anyone else's so now this it isn't about dismissing anyone's opinion or or their or their feelings about this it's about making sure that children aren't being harmed this is the thing that we're talking about and making sure that people recognize the fact that their 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 slogan and their thing has been co-opted by fucking horrible people that are constantly causing harm to us. And there's about 90 other variables going on at the same time. Yeah, because what I was getting at with this is that she's all over Instagram and TikTok. And this is going to be th that you children are watching this. And I don't think it's okay. It feels a really sexualized to me. And it's like, it's it's a weird thing that like males can like, once you have a, a double mastectomy, you're fine to be there like flaunting that and, and doing that and, and oh, friend can, of children. Can, it's you, weird. You, it's just weird. Josh is like, cool. I'll remember that you guys like, just like to say things. And then when someone asks for clarification, for the specific things you said, you run away. No I'm not running away no, from anything. I'm right second. here. Let me finish talking, please. <laughs> no one has ever run away from you, Josh. Not in not in this fucking chat room. Honestly, anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about. I mean, you can you can reach me any way that you'd like. During this the show, we we've spent more time talking back and forth with you than anyone else. Yeah, you, you've had this. You've had the center stage. You know, you got to ask questions. We try to answer them as best we can. We've come to a, a conclusion that you feel differently about it and think we're late to the late to the party. And you're not really offering more information. You're not really giving me well, but Steve, here's this. And I'd be like, oh, damn. And then you'd have the rest of the time of the show because it would be interesting topic, you know, and we'd send you the link so you could come on and tell us because that's how it is. I'm not trying to stop you from interacting with us or think that we don't care about it because we do. No, we're just, That's we're the at point. the, we're kind of at the end of the show. We've been doing this for three hours now and we're, you know, we're at the wrap up time. Yeah. I just don't want to like, feel like, like Josh feels like we, you know, like we slighted him or, or wanted, wanted, uh, you know, anything less than what we always want. You, it's all good. Yeah. 
No, we've been going for three hours. I'm I'm this is a bonus show this week. Yeah. I'm I'm mm-hmm. I'm not if this was like, you know, if we didn't have something planned, I'm and this isn't an open stream. Like I I I, I wasn't I have this is my my, my literally my last thing to cover. And we've been going for two hours and 59 minutes. Like, I'm, that's why the numbers drop off usually towards the end of the show. And that, <laughs> so anyway, this person is a big social media influencer. And so she, this person will be, you know what I mean? How she's behaving. She's setting a standard for children to, to behave. And, but they're, they, now they're saying that she won't be invited back to the white house. I mean, I just don't understand why they would think that that would be okay to do in, in front of like, you know what I mean? Just in, there, it just seems really inappropriate to me. It seems really disrespectful to me. Um, it just didn't seem like it was the place to do it. Like when they were sitting there talking about transgender kids, you know, and, and they're saying all this at the White House. I just don't, I don't feel like that was absolutely appropriate. I mean, uh, someone else said that they, the well, they support her and everything that she stands for. Exposing your breasts at this event did not help the cause. Exactly my point. It does not help. It doesn't help. It doesn't, it's going to, people are going to be turned off by this and, and not like in a sexual way, but just like, why would you do that in front of like, you know what I mean? It just, it just seems like it's a little bit off the rails. It's not setting a good example. Like if you want kids to be able to look up to you and you want adults to be able to like look up to you and you are on all these social medias and you have this huge following, you have like a responsibility if you get invited to the White House to not act a fool. I mean, I wouldn't go to the White House. That's just me. Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to go there. I wouldn't. <laughs> that's not where I want to go. I think that's ridiculous to even go there. But, you know, some people. Most people, not some people, most people who live in this country would jump at the chance. I mean, it just it feels like they're making a mockery of us, like even more so. You know, like, as if Biden's not bad enough already, as if we don't have already, like, you know what I mean? Like, world leaders laughing at us. Look at our freaking presidents that we've had. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. It's been tragic for a while now. And then pride being in the middle of the whole thing. And I'm just like, you know, this whole pride month thing is just, it's, it's ridiculous. We don't need an entire month. Like, I feel like we're going backwards. Ooh, what about... What about all the gay people that died in the war? Yeah, what about the people that, that died with the rainbow bombs that got dropped on yeah, them? About those, I don't know what you, what you can do about those people. Um, so it says here that it took focus from the event. It was meant to be focused. It is right on... Right to you, uh, another user wrote, I'm sorry to say this, but I really do support you and admire you as part of the LGBT... Oh my God, I can't even with all these QI plus community. I'm saddened that this added fuels the conservatives to spread lies that are nothing more than sexual deviance. And that's another thing that does add fuel to the people that do want to, you know what I mean? To, for, for people who are part of this community to not exist. There are those people still out there that believe that if you are LGB uh, plus T and, and then that you should not exist. And that doesn't help us. It really doesn't. I would have an issue whether or not this person was uh, transgender or they were, you know, a lesbian or if they were a straight woman. I still don't think it's appropriate to do that. No. Yeah, I would never trash uh, Josh Davis. And I hope he doesn't feel like we did because... I. That guy is a fucking prophet, man. He told us to expect exactly what has happened. He like with a lot of the people in independent it, media. He called it so long ago. Uh huh. So long ago. Well, he was been around these people longer than us. Yeah, he he was here before us, so he was like, "Nope, these guys are fucking douchebags." Here, they're gonna show you. Okay, and but that's whoop. that's that's kind of going. Uh, I'm just I'm shouting out Josh because that's that's I know we appreciate him. I'm just trying to finish this little bit of the article. Um, so in response, the Biden administration announced a series of measures from federal various federal agencies to counteract actions from Republican led states, including initiatives aimed at addressing youth LGBTQ homelessness, 
and the appointment of an educational coordinator who will uh, monitor state book bans. And there, yeah, there's a lot happening with these books. And there's a lot of there, there's books that are being banned that shouldn't be banned. And then there's books that are being put in these schools that are not appropriate. And uh, we'll be covering that soon. I'm looking into that more. But there's stuff that's happening. And these all these things are happening. Like, it's not just one thing. It's like this is just one piece of a huge puzzle of this agenda that is being pushed. And a lot of it's being pushed in the name of, like, you know, being inclusive and the, the LGBT community and this and that. And uh, a lot of us that are in this community, we feel used. We don't agree with it. And we do not want, like, the MAP people, minor attractive persons, being added to our are, are like we already get blamed for all kinds of shit. We already get all kinds of hate within our community. We don't need more. We don't need people acting a fool, especially <laughs> when all the like when all the eyes are on us. And you know, you're at the White House, especially. Speaking of eyes, the FX is like Lucky's probably on a list that wouldn't be allowed near the White House. <laughs> I secretly hope that's true for me. Just oh, uh, probably. Okay, yeah, probably. Um, listen, my mom and stepdad have been there once. It was during the uh, the Clinton administration. Allegedly, no, they were there. Uh, gross. No, they were there. They you get, you get, that doesn't wash off. Ook. I can't help it. It wasn't my choice that they went there. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, anyway, um. Uh, see, I lost my train of thought. It's a, towards the very end of this, and I'm just, I'm I'm tired. This is an extra show. I usually don't do an extra show during the week. Uh, tomorrow night, we'll be on with Buck Angel. So, I, I hope to, you know, have a great conversation with Buck. Uh, sure we, will. We'll link all the notes in the bottom, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. Peace out, people.